Oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of the RPG Exploration Society right here on Saving Throw. My name is Rich and I will be your guide and game master one last time as we explore <laughs> Dune Adventures in the Imperium, the uh, the wonderful RPG by Modifius. Um, oh my gosh. We've been having a great time with this learn to play, uh, talking about house and how to build a house. <laughs> talking about houses. There we go. Not the show house. Um, <laughs> making awesome characters based on the house of posh that we've created uh, all sorts of npcs and then we've begun our adventures on arrakis uh, finally so if you are brand new if this is your first time go check all those out so you can see all kind of the fun of this system and hopefully by the end of this episode five uh, you will be able to take this game yourself and run it for everyone all the time yeah that's what i mean <laughs> um uh, let's see. I am joined, of course, by this amazing cast of, of heroes, um, getting to play this uh, this wonderful game, getting to explore this world together. I have had such a great time, uh, and I get to introduce them one last time. Uh, first, uh, the wonderful Lisa Pearl. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I am doing quite well. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I have enjoyed your... Uh, uh, calm Bene Gesserit leadership uh, throughout this entire thing. Uh, I'm excited Thank to you. see how well it, it goes in this disaster scenario yes, we found ourselves see. in. <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, next up, B. welcome. <laughs> hello, hello. hello. Um, I would love to comment really quickly. You said cast of heroes. Do you really consider us heroes? Oh, I mean, okay. Um, cast of leads. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, there you go. Okay, okay. That's a good I was thinking. Too. I don't know if you've done a lot of heroic things. <laughs> a, a cast of human yeah. heroes portraying. <laughs> ah, there it is. Yeah, that's how I meant it. Ah, love it. Love Your natural yeah, wholesomeness okay. has has caused you to view view us through such a rose tinted lens. True. No. Um. <laughs> I, I think I think there is a heroic side to the house of posh but uh but maybe it's best found back uh back in different halls than the ones we're currently traveling i'm not sure yeah. uh where would you put us on the scale b are we <laughs> um a negative five okay perfect <laughs> in terms of heroics you know um i play yeah. a woman named parmore and uh you know they're like a sandworm rancher uh not yeah. exactly a legal activity and they travel with a tiny sandworm as well named spicy poops also not a good thing not, no 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 yeah. so yeah uh, hero is just not the adjective it's not sorry that's not the noun that uh mm. i would use to describe us i mean we didn't assassinate anyone last week so victories i mean we haven't <laughs> the... yet this right, we did right. a lot at first though we did I a lot so yeah before. we're still yeah. averaging like like yeah. one an episode even mm -hmm. if we don't do any more like, yeah uh -huh. well uh cohen welcome as well oh, hello. uh the wonderful drow hi um yeah so uh so i feel like uh one of the the hallmarks of this group there was a moment where i remember you had seen teos's introductory scene and you were like i gotta I got to step up the the, uh, the killing here, uh, yeah, and that has you know. been like just gone on. <laughs> yeah, I feel adventure. that like I don't think anybody has ever has nobody often often in a group like this, someone I feel like will step forward and be like, I got to get this group back on the straight and narrow of like uh, honesty and kindness, and and yeah. that is just it just never happened in this, and I love it. No. It never, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Droha, Mintat, Mintat Assassin, uh, Twisted Mintat. Oh, did I say Assassin? Twisted Mintat, uh, Amateur Assassin. Uh, oh, fair, fair. Yeah. <laughs> but with you know, well, ex expert enthusiasm, uh, can remember yeah. anything they've seen, and uh, I think some kind of torturer. Also, have a weird rope. Don't forget, I still have that weird rope. I can't uh, forget. I can't forget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin, welcome. Um, haven't seen you since yesterday. Um... <laughs> oh, you are muted. muted. You know, I, I said a million and really important things right there, but I was <laughs> muted. So I'm not going to wow. bother repeating them. Uh, but yeah, I am I am recovered from my L.A. trip and um, I'm ready to 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 dive into Arrakis with my heroic character. Apparently the only hero here. Agent Brad Montana. Yes. Right. Focused on retirement, as I recall. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to make it, too. 
Excellent. Well, uh, we'll, we'll see, actually, because we're, we're going to have to move to you pretty quickly as uh, we left last time in a pretty precarious flying scenario. Uh, last but not least, Teos, welcome to the show uh, uh, one more time. Uh, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, yeah. I have to say, I feel like Montana's heroism is solely for being neutral, which says something about the rest of us. <laughs> Look, yeah, I didn't do anything <laughs> bad. Right. That's what I'm saying. It, like, you won the gold <laughs> star because of that. <laughs> You're like the teacher's pet because you didn't murder someone. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's valid. A bunch of people. Well, that's right, but, they're, but they're still breathing. Oh, wow. In fact, last uh -huh. time, I don't know if we lose a point for this because it's negative one assassination when you, you know, we actually save someone. It's true. You saved somebody, right? Yeah. We yeah, get like makes... quadruple points for that, I think. I, mean, I don't know what the ranking system is. Time. It was almost incidental, right? <laughs> Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, yeah, I'm playing Dr. Yewan, and uh, I am the Sook doctor that never graduated. Uh, and some say that was because I ran out of money. At least that's what I say. And if you say otherwise, <laughs> you tend to die. Um, <laughs> I love healing too. It's not like I don't. And I mean, lots of people swear by my techniques, my curatives, my pills, and my syringes. Uh, yeah. Who, who are these? Who are these people? Like, how can, many of them are there? Many, many, <laughs> many. And you can't like, find really ones that give me negative. Uh, marks, give or take. So yeah. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> excellent. Yeah, uh, that's. A... <laughs> wow. You uh, have a perfect rating on the cult of Yelp. <laughs> wow. Well, before we can even get started, uh, two quick notes. First of all, we already got a toast from Five Foot Latina. Thank you so much. Hey, Pashis, I hope you've got roadside assistance. Uh, or does that only work when there are roads? It's, uh, a good question that we are <laughs> going to find out the answer to. Where we're going, we're not going to need roads. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> um, let's see. And also, I do want to mention that, uh, that like every episode, we are giving away three copies of the Dune RPG PDF from Modiphius. Uh, you need to, in the chat right now, make sure you're following Saving Throw uh, here on Twitch. And then you need to type in exclamation mark raffle and then a number from one to 10 that'll enter you in. And at the end of this episode, we will give those away to three more lucky folks. Um, and I think with that, it's time because, oh my goodness, do we need to get into it? We, our adventures have taken a, a dark turn uh, as last time. We were midway through this thopter flight away from the grief, this ridiculous vessel uh, run by an incompetent commander. Um, uh, and all sorts of trouble was going on. All sorts of trouble. Some sort of, of um, uh, I don't know, is, is sabotage too strong of a word? Some sort of oh, accident, no. right? Oh, no. It's Sabotelling clearly sabotage. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, by, uh, by a figure named Corinth Euler. Um, and you were told that they were out on this, um, this harvester, out on the surface, picking up spice right now. Strangely, they were just transferred that day to head out there. And uh, midway through your flight, um, bad stuff started to happen, right? Um, lights started blinking, alerts uh, start flashing, informing you that your fuel had abruptly run out. Uh, oil starts leaking, the, f the engine is burning, and there's like a plume of smoke behind you as the thopter plummets to the sand below. Um, and you're well accompanied by the constant screams of Commander Globus, who you dragged along on this trip with you. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. The, the commander is with you right here on this uh, inspection survey tour. Mm -hmm. We worked uh, hard on that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, you did indeed. Um, so hours later, the, the camera kind of pans and uh and we see the survey team from house posh the five of you and the commander slowly rising over a sand dune walking out with a lonely desert spread below you it's one of those like like the haze and the heat you're all like these flickering phantoms in the distance uh but i'm curious how you survived this thopter crash so first i want to turn to agent brad montana um the pilot of this doomed vehicle how did you survive the crash <laughs> Uh, well, so, uh, you know, in pilot training uh, to to be part of the Spacers Guild, you need to have some training on how to properly land your vehicle in a case of emergency. Uh -huh. So I'm going to rely on my knowledge to make sure that that me and my companions, who, who, who are my charges in this, who are under my care, yeah. get down as safely as possible. That makes perfect sense. 
All right. Well, um, this is going to be, I mean, making sure that you get down safely in this circumstance, this is a daunting task. I mean, you are the pilot, so it's yep. probably going to be a move yep. sort of deal uh, to see if you can get this landed in the right way. I mean, you're going mm -hmm. down. Yeah. But it's just whether you all survive. Um, and before we start talking uh, about your uh, your dice, let's let's check in real quick. We are, first of all, starting a new scene right here, which mm -hmm. we started with you with five momentum. New scene begins. One of those is going to go away. So I'm going to move that off to the side. And with this crash, I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm going to increase the threat count by two. Um, so now we're tied. <laughs> all right. So I can use those to make the scene more difficult or, or do a whole host of things. But for the moment, you're just looking at a daunting task. All right. So move. if I remember, the daunting is three successes. It is three successes. OK, so uh, what I'm going to do, uh, because this is important and, uh, you know, companions mm -hmm. tell me otherwise, but I think I'm going to go ahead and spend three momentum to get two extra dice. Yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. So, uh, and then, so for my dice, I'm going to, of course, be doing uh, rolling move. Um, and I think as much as I want this to be tied to power, my my highest skill, I don't feel that. I feel more duty because I'm protecting folks with the House of Posh. Yes. So I will do when, that. When you described it, duty made perfect sense. And your, uh, right, your drive statement, I serve the guild but belong to the House of Posh, that works perfectly. Yep. And then, so I'm going to roll four dice and uh, let's see how painful this gets. And I am, in fact, using a focus. You are indeed. All nice. right. Oh. And let's see. I got three successes. Nice. You got three successes? Oh, oh wait, two. Two. I see two. But and... don't, do, do I get one because, don't I get one because of focus or how's that work? No, that means if you rolled from a one to a seven, you That's get right. two successes. Gotcha. So, All right. So no I got two criticals successes. here. No two critical. successes yep. and two complications. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the uh, the crash does not go extremely well. Um, you're able to bring it down. Um, and instead of bringing it kind of smoothly bouncing along the sand to kind of bring you to an eventual stop, uh, you slam in and it crashes hard. Um, everyone in the party is going to feel the, uh, the complications for this one. Um, where did I go? Each of you are going to gain a single complication, and it is going to be, um, let's see. This is going to be the bruised trait, I think. I don't think I'm going to go all the way up to battered on this one, which would be quite a bit. But but everyone is feeling all the bruises. It's it's hard to move with, a, with this pain um, that you've suffered. Um, there is a shout, and almost instantly you can tell that the, uh, the commander is more than bruised here. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's see. What does um, the bruised complication uh, do for us? It is going to be based on move. So okay. basically, whenever you move, every move task is more difficult. It should okay. be should be just fine when you're, you know, trapped in a desert. You know, don't worry about huh. it. Huh. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so let's see. Since we're since we're kind of sticking with with uh, Agent Brad Montana right now, um, you you crash. It comes down again. Plume of smoke like flying up to the sky. Um, you start checking some of the systems really quickly, and uh, and your the engine is done for. It is down. Um, all of your long range communications are out with the crash. Uh, you do have some short range transmitters that, that many of you carry, but uh, unless you get near someone, uh, you're in a lot of trouble. Okay. Is there anything that Agent Brad Montana has in this thopter that they might want to salvage or or save? Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I grabbed some odd ends, some trinkets, whatever. Like, you know, maybe I had some like fuzzy dice hanging from the rearview mirror. I grabbed those. Uh, that type. Yes, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but but nothing specific. <laughs> really, my concern is getting out of the thopter and checking to see the source of this of this issue, and to I confirm see. its sabotage so I can take it out on the captain. <laughs> when I Excellent. when I see you doing that kind of prep, I think, don't we have to worry about sandworms? <laughs> uh, right? I think Parmoon is standing like with their hands on their hips, just kind of scanning the horizon. Maybe they put their ear to the ground every now and then, and they've got <laughs> spicy poops on the ground next to them. And spicy poops is just eating the sand and pooping it out. Mm -hmm. All right. Is the captain guy tied up? I mean, it's, sorry, is he okay? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> let's check in. Uh, I want to make sure we get we get everyone a, a quick moment here. Um, so the crash the is enough the that even though you are commander. all uh, everybody calls him the captain. 
<laughs> bruised and hurt by this, uh, you are able to, to climb your way out of the thopter and get onto the sands. Um, but I want to turn very quickly to the doctor, right? I mean, in a, a sudden crash, you might need the attention of a trained medical professional. Um, how's your bedside manner? You know? Oh, yeah. How are you, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm well known for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's so strange how I'm so nice and kind and helpful. <laughs> right, right. Uh, do you help folks out or is it everyone kind oh, yeah. of okay? Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I assume that I'm kind of periodically giving people pills for things. Uh, and in this case, I give people a, a number of things meant to sort of pick you up and give you a sort of like, like a vigor. Uh, and I say, and I, and, and I make all kinds of claims, but they sound pause plausible, right? Like, uh, like that I'm going to, you'll, you'll get less dehydrated and you will, uh, uh, yeah, retain moisture. Uh, this will help you move faster in the sand, all that sort of stuff. And I definitely concentrate a lot of that, uh, on the commander because I don't want him to be a giant liability to us. <laughs> well, I'm taking none of these medicines, uh, not because I <laughs> don't trust you, but because I know you very well. Uh -huh. And I'm just, I'm just like, that's fine. You, you just hold on. You're all for him. I'm good. Thank you. You, you and I have <laughs> had this conversation that a placebo believed is a placebo that works. And I've know. got my own stuff. I pull up my tiny little ruby colored <laughs> bottle of the juice of Safu. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm a well calibrated machine. And I've got my high test stuff right here. When I need it, I'll take it. Indeed, indeed, you are. Yeah. Put it right there. Well, uh, Teos, I would say that what? the doctor notices that the commander's leg is broken hmm. from the from the crash. It's not not just a simple thing. Um, it's going to take everybody kind of working together to get this commander out of here. Oh, I'm not we're helping. Not, we're not going to do that. No, that's no. <laughs> if those are uh, the terms. <laughs> that's what you can tell. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's... Um, no, no. Well, I'm going to check for sabotage, and then I'm going to uh, ignore the the captain. Okay. Even Is there any water? Seeing seeing what everybody is, is saying about the commander, uh, I will ask. Let's see, who do I trust? I, I will try, <laughs> I will ask uh, Jaselnica. I will I will kind of lean over to you and I will say, should I give him something that functions more as a sedative and we just leave him? Mm. Oh, leave him? Mm. <laughs> I was. The rest of us seem unmotivated by his survival. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're going to, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> I was going to say, if we're going to be blamed for his death, then I think we actually should protect his life. But if we could just say that he died in the crash, then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Parman, um, what, what, mm. you're from here, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. What? How do worms respond to like, uh? something like this a crash they're gonna come they're gonna be hungry okay if there's yep. so like let's say we're not here when they get here and there's somebody writhing around like in pain nearby Done. Done. do you think Just like that okay do you think they yep. will focus on that person instead of us oh especially if he's writhing we okay. shouldn't bind that leg at all yeah. do we have any rope like could we drag him behind us and um, like use him as a lure for it so that rope no, I don't think so. Rope, Boarding? I don't know where I, I don't know where I'd get any of that. Right. It would probably be pretty nice rope. Oh, probably only, yeah. wouldn't want it to get eaten by a worm. <laughs> That's true. Maybe we can strip some cables out of the the, the thopter and, and and pull him on a leash behind us to uh, to make sure that we don't get eaten by the sandworms. That just I don't okay. see how that's going to make like, us not get eaten. Yeah, that feels okay. like. Come and get all of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's oh, okay. a bad idea, Brad Montana. That's not <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I can have bad ideas on you occasion. Fish, fish with worms, not for worms. Uh, mm, wow. I have never done fishing, so thanks. Does he? Uh, does the? Does the commander have anything valuable like water or like anything? You were taking a quick look, and uh, and the commander was ready for a relatively short survey mission. So, uh, you know, wearing their wearing their still suits because uh, they have to. Um, there's still kind of like the uniform coat over the top of it, uh, not carrying a lot of extra water. You know, does he, is his little still enough. suit like mouth thing loose or in his mouth? Oh, it's it's loose at the moment. All right, I want to drink his water. <laughs> just want to like whatever he's got in the old catch pockets i just want to i don't want it to Excellent. go to waste i don't know how long we're going to be here it's for yeah. our seat 
Uh, the, the commander is panicking, kind of uh, yelling in pain. Uh, you, you head over and start drinking that water. Excellent. Um, uh, notice a couple things pretty quickly. I mean, first of all, this is not a good still suit. I mean, yours are not great either, but this one, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a still suit from the grief, and so you can you can kind of taste it. Like there's there's oh. kind of like an oil in there, no matter what. Gross. Um, so yeah, not great. Um, but uh, but there's also not a lot of water in mm. there. You think maybe probably put the suit on just to go on this voyage. Mm. So not a lot of Fair turnover enough. yet. So I'll, uh, I'll suggest the rest of you strip this place for anything we need for survival. You know, tents, tarps, whatever, water, food. And uh, I'm going to administer something to this commander to put him down uh, for a bit. Enough okay. to leave him behind. Uh, mm. and he can wake later or whatever. Uh, okay. And, and when he, if he falls asleep, then I will also tie him down. I, I feel like I, I have no problem with... a. Uh, Doctor you on spice creating a sedative. <laughs> so yeah. Ding. <laughs> All right. You got this under control. Um the, Actually, uh, the commander I give, after... I'll give him a rope. I'm like, here, here's the oh, here's sure. the rope. I'm sorry, Brad. Your rope? Yeah, you know, Brad was right. I'm... I'm sorry. I was holding on to it. You're right. Mm -hmm. It was the right call. We, we may need cover. that rope. I, I feel like we can just use like a we can just use like the buckles we have in here for the cables from the Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> No, you know, I took it back in, and I've got like a smile on my face, and I'm like, they they get me, they get me. Uh -huh. I finally found that family I was looking for. <laughs> Character arc resolved. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I I pop open my my glove box, uh, and I and I pull out my very special map. I don't oh. know if it's a special map of of this area. Maybe it is. You have lots of maps, right? Which yeah. special map did you bring? Was it the one of Arrakis or the one of you know it, that it's... planet over there? Of why would I bring the one on the planet over there? I clearly brought the reliable map that reveals a lot about Arrakis, its people, and local, and in all kinds of local stuff. Okay, this is excellent. All right, um, so I, I like that you have that asset, and that's going to be very useful. Um, you may grab that. You make sure you've got it, um, got it with you, heading out of the Thopter in yeah. order to check it out. We'll deal with that in a moment. Uh, but Parmoon, you, I mean, these these are your sands, right? I mean, there's no mm -hmm. rocks around here. That's not great. Um, and uh, as you were kind of looking around, uh, you know a little bit about the movements of the sandworms and the things that are going to catch their attention, right? Um, what is your first bit of survival knowledge that you want to pass to these other folks who have never been on this planet before? Um, you have to, the still suit, uh, it has to go into your, your mouth, your mouth. Yeah, not, <laughs> don't let it dangle. Gotta, you gotta actually use it. Make sure all your, all your holes are sealed up. That Wow. Yep. Rohide, that was loud. I'm so sorry. I didn't think about that. I just thought about the pantomime. I didn't think about the fact that it was an actual microphone. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Um, no, oh, wow. you're on the right track. That's that's good. We're it's the right page. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, there you go, Doctor. That's excellent. I'm going to not electrocute myself. Good, good, good strategy. Yes. Good. <laughs> yeah, don't, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. make sure it's not Perfect. plugged into the wall okay mm -hmm. well as as you were kind of here go ahead and uh as you know suddenly you your entire viewpoint i suppose has changed while you're looking earlier for a group of people who are ruining this planet now you're with the house of posh and they might all perish here on the surface do you want to give yeah. me an, um feels like an understand check at this point to kind of like evaluate this situation a little bit from a survival standpoint okay um Ooh, what is my drive going to be? I mean, Shai Halud is the one god. I am on. This is... <laughs> Shai yeah. Halud is coming, so... Shai Halud is all around <laughs> us. Just wait. Make a little bit more noise. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be understand and faith. Sounds good. I hope you can't hear my dog woofing in the distance. <laughs> Um, let's see. And this is going to be, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, this is just a quick one. did you need? You're great. It was a difficulty yeah, one. Yeah, I know. Um, Thank you. So you're looking around, and uh, you notice a few things, actually, about the scene. Um, not only uh, do you notice that something in the Thopter is still active, and it is still making this constant vibration um, oh, against no. the sand, right? It's, the, it's that pattern that is going to bring the sandworms calling. Um, 
that's still going. Uh, you look around, and since you were just looking at still suits and just talking about it, you notice actually that. Oh, randomizer. Oh, it is Agent Brad Montana's uh, in the crash. His still suit has torn. Um, that's a little uh, hard to see, but you just notice that one of the uh, one of the tubes in there is ripped and needs repair. Okay. Um, well, no shade, but I'm gonna focus on. Uh, so really loudly, I'm going to shout. Um, we should all probably get away from this thopter because, um, and like, they'll put their ear to the ground again and like, listen mm -hmm. and feel some of the vibrations. Yeah. We're right. all going to get eaten in probably, I don't know, 120 seconds if we don't get a move on. Reasonable. <laughs> I'm gone. Just, just, oh, just out of here. Just getting out of here. I don't well, need, see. I don't need to be told to run for my life twice. Uh, generally. I want to <laughs> check in. Uh, before you run, because you okay. and and also Agent Brad Montana were talking uh, a little bit about investigating, uh, and I'm going to give you that opportunity before before we start running. Um, right, this you've got your Mentat powers to the fullest, right? This is a okay. scene of of something bad. Um, what's uh what was it that brought this thopter down? What happened here? Okay, maybe some maybe I could do a little bit of a understand data analysis. That sounds good to me. Trying to find uh, the truth. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, unless we've got like mechanics or something like that. But uh, I'm good with that. Data analysis will work. So you've got a focus? I uh, believe so. Which yes. Is, uh, there truth. You. Truth. And then I'm going to. How many? So how many dice? So this is this is actually a little bit of a daunting task. It's going to be a little harder because of one of the complications of the scene, which is that there's a sandworm coming, and uh, there is a lot of motion going on. Oh, okay. So we'll call this difficulty two. Not not terrible because. Uh, it's also right there, but you're moving a little quick. Okay, so do I input? So how many dice do I have, though? Just you two? have two. At the okay, moment. I have two. All right. Um, one momentum, which could buy one more if you want. I think I can. Uh, hold on, I have a thing. I have a thing for this. Uh, uh, for when making understand, one of the d20s in your pool may be considered to have rolled a one instead of rolling it. Uh, if yes. there's an, oh, that, that's, oh, sorry, that's only for recalling data. Whoops, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. Irrelevant. I'm going to just roll with two and just okay. let, the, let it falls where, where it falls, where, let it fall where it may. Ugh. Sounds good. Okay. How did that shake out? Oh, uh, wow. Three bad. successes. Bad. Very nice. Get us that so, momentum. Yeah, you yeah. gain one momentum back, which is fantastic. Uh, and more to the point, as you were looking around, and also as Agent Brad Montana looking through this this place, um, you can definitely tell that the sabotage pattern that you see is not too different from what you were suggesting uh, some time ago. Um, you're looking, and it looks like um, instead of just you know these cables or anything, it looks like someone sliced the fuel line on the engine. And then you can see the remnants of some kind of a sealant on there, um, something that would burn up at high heat. So it was cut, sealed, and then at some point uh, the sealant burned away. Um, beyond that, that's a, that's a quick look at it. It doesn't tell you why or who for sure, but you figured out uh, exactly what it is. And uh, not much else to uh, discover here. I mean, you could certainly grab your things and start moving out of this space. Um, but before we do, I want to go over to Jaselnica. Um, the the burning crash, I mean, sent this plume of sand into the air as it landed, right? Uh, you smash into it, and yeah, it's just sand, but uh, as it's kind of burning, there is still just a, a hint of spice in the air, and you can't help but just breathe some in. Um, you've got solid command over your biochemistry, right? Bene Gesserit, you are, you are good, no problem. Um, but uh, there's a brief moment where your mind is filled with a vision about the future of House Posh. Um, oh. What do you think Jaselnica would see as the future? Oh, oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I get to choose what the vision is? Um, I've got part two. I just want to know what you think that one would be like. <laughs> okay, well, I think part one of my vision of the future is that we get the, yeah, we get this commission or contract to start uh processing spice mm -hmm. and dealing spice okay. you have this very successful vision uh everything swirling everything great is what you see the future looking like um kind of moving ahead from wherever you are uh which is perfect um Love it. i think as you see your own success as well right uh kind of like before when you saw the uh oh what did we call it uh the, the salt shaker back on 
uh, back on Spice World, right? Um, there was that shadow of Guy Fieri's spice looming above with a spiky hair at the top. Um, you see the same thing, uh, kind of overshadowing all of you across the sands. And as your vision starts to fade, it starts to shrink uh, and kind of fall backwards. And at the very end of the vision, you can almost barely see the, st the, uh, the shadow at all. Um, do you tell everybody what you saw? Or do you um, leave it to yourself? Can you just explain the end of that one more time? The sh sure. What is the shadow that I see? It's, uh, it is, you can tell it's definitely Guy Fieri's shadow because it's got the, the you know, traditional hair spikes, right? Um, he does like to watch things from a distance, so kind of looming over everything. Uh, but as the vision is fading and you're seeing your success, that shadow is withdrawing and shrinking. Oh, interesting. Um, and by the end, it's almost gone. No, I'm, I'm not going to say anything right now. All right. It seems like we have other more pressing things. Indeed. All right. Well, you do, and it's got to be done quickly, right? You you all kind of have to learn uh, as you are moving how to walk without rhythm, how to, to make sure that your, your patterns are not creating vibrations that will attract sandworms to the surface. They... Trying Ooh. to coach everybody as we're running for our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Rich, I yeah. will give everybody an adrenaline shot. Uh, which okay. is one of the abilities I have. This will yeah. allow everybody to remove the bruised condition for this scene. Oh, cool. Nice. Uh, I can do it once per character, so everybody gets an adrenaline shot. That is excellent. Thank you. Because <laughs> uh, it is definitely going to be a move test as we are getting across this place. You've, you've patched up nice. the still suit, uh, I believe, so Agent Brad Montana is not going to be extra thirsty or weakened by this trip, but it is still difficult. You're moving quickly. Uh, you want to be out of here. I mean, you... <laughs> seeing a sandworm sounds kind of terrifying. You don't know when it's going to be here, but one is certainly coming back to eat up Agent Brad Montana's favorite thopter, and uh, so you should get out of here. Get out of here. Grab your fuzzy dice and run. Uh, ooh, I'm sorry. I just got to double check before we go. The commander is sedated and left behind? Yes. Of course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just so yeah. doesn't really agree with this plan, but... Okay. We I have a sandworm coming. <laughs> Giselle Nika, we have to go now. We have no time to pull that man out. His leg is broken and he will be a liability. He, yeah. he died in the crash and he was uh -huh. uh, incompetent anyway. Yeah. Okay. The, well, let's plus... hope the sandworm actually eats him. Oh, he will feed Shai Halud. There is no yeah. doubt about that. Okay. <laughs> I think that the, the worry, the the hope. The, I'm 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 gonna save more hope for like not being eaten myself. I, I think we'll be all right. I think I think yeah. we're. I think Throw he's gonna be eaten for sure. Yeah. Throw high pattern. Stagger right. your feet. Stagger your feet. We already pom right. promised like, Bob the job. So that's I mean, true. Last yeah. session we promised my new friend Bob the job. Forgot about that. Yeah, yeah you got a whole team ready to ready to go up. There. Yeah, we oh, made yeah. friends. Uh, we we have a new like new team who's gonna be on top of things. It's gonna be uh -huh. good. We, yeah. we we got rid of the weak link. Uh, oh, I do but... have a question. Actually, do yes. we did we sedate? Did you sedate him before we left? I did. Yeah. Okay. So he's. I'm sleeping. just wondering what the last thing he remembers us saying is. Like, we're gonna leave him right. Now. <laughs> <laughs> if he survives, do we? Ha can we say no? You're remembering wrong. Like we tried. We brought you with hmm. us, and then uh, I don't know. Anyway, if I'm he survives, the last thing he'll remember is Drohai drinking his water and going like, "What's happening?" Yeah, he'll be like, <laughs> "You dreamed that. Right. That was a spice." A yeah, spice that's not. Right. That's not going to hold up. No, like, not at yeah. all. You feel good. You feel safe. Um, so yes, you you begin the walk, right? The walk away. I mean, certainly a, a practice worm rider with the right tools might be prepared to like get ready with a sandworm and leap on top. Uh, this may not be that circumstance. Um, and so getting out of here with the team intact, uh, walking off in the distance, you, you feel the rumbles eventually. Um, the entire ground mm -hmm. for just kilometers around is, is mildly shaking, um, but uh, seems to take a little bit for it to get there. Um, after a couple hours, you do look back and the, the plume of smoke has uh, started to fade and kind of branch, you know what I mean, uh, diffuse into the air. There we go. Uh, um, Maybe gone. We don't know. <laughs> oh, he is. He is. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you walk. You walk. It is frustrating. It is painful. I mean, honestly, trying to, to walk without marching or keeping your steps lined up. Um, having the mental focus for that helps for sure, but it is still a strange task. Is it, it like is walking at a con? A ton of fun. <laughs> like when, you, yes. when you're trying to move yes, through the it tables, is. it's like a... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow, I just felt so much pain just then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it hurt. It's been a while, but but I remember like it's yesterday. Oh, yep. Um, the uh, it is fortunately a little bit later in the day when this crash happens, so soon enough it is dark on the sands. I mean, it's still bright. We have plenty of of sky, um, but uh, you're looking for for rocks or sign of anything in the distance, and it is just open sand. You're surviving as best you can constantly kind of calling out on those comms, hoping to get a signal from anyone nearby. Um, you're still heading roughly, oh, with this map, of course. Uh, the map with all the secrets, right, Justin? Um, you are able to all of the pin secrets. pinpoint your route pretty easily. Uh, you you have a big assumption about where this this ship, this harvester that you were looking for is. And uh, with that map, you think that, uh, that you could reach there. I mean, seems like in a, maybe another day and a half of travel. Assuming you all survive. All right. I mean, you got the suits at least. Mm -hmm. You got decent suits. Um, the next day, uh, late kind of afternoon, you finally start hearing a couple crackles on your comms. Oh. Uh, you hear a, hear a voice coming through. Is anyone there? This is this is Beckon from the Grief scanning for survivors. And then moments later, it repeats. What do we do? I, My comms are off. Oh, wait, we, we survived. But the commander did not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I answer. So, hello, this is Agent Brad Montana of um, oh. the, uh, the guild, the spacing guild. Uh, we have five survivors and one casualty. Our ornithopter has been destroyed in a crash, and we are making our way towards, I say, whatever point on the map we're going towards. Ah, ooh. That's, uh, uh, I'm sorry to hear about anyone who uh, who fell in the crash. Uh, the, the wreckage was, well, we saw the plume, and I was able to pinpoint where it was, but there, there's no sign of anything left in that spot. Uh, I assume sandworms took care of that crash. Um... Look how how are you all how are you all feeling? Hot, sure, perfect. Dirac is for you. <laughs> <A little sick. laughs> I drank some water. I'm not I'm not sure it was. Uh, I think it might have turned. Yeah. Not feeling the best. Uh, the water turned. <laughs> yeah, but thank you for asking. <laughs> well, fortunately, you are you are close enough to uh, to our harvester, uh, the uh, the Alberic. Uh, if you continue on the path, well. Um, Excuse me. You do you let him know kind of where you are? Is that I think what you said, Justin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. relative okay. area. Uh, in that case, you you eventually look up and and after this conversation goes on for a bit, you you see a thopter coming near, uh, much smaller than the one that you were piloting, but uh, the voice comes down from it. Yeah, it looks like your your path is going to lead you directly to the Alberic, the the harvester that uh, seems you were headed for anyways, uh, not far off in the distance. Excellent. Uh, here, if you just, uh, well, I'll fly a little bit. You just, uh, you know, keep an eyesight, head off this direction. Uh, I'll head back to the grief report that, uh, that's, you're all, who's, who's all safe? You said one casualty? One casualty. As this guy's speaking, I'm going to yeah. look to Jaselnica and Drohai to give them that look of like, does this guy's voice sound good, reliable? Do I recognize Ooh. the voice? Is there anyone we've, you we've met? Not. Okay. Mm -hmm. No accent from for anybody. I would say that, that you look up, and since the the object is in sight, you can tell that the the thopter up there is one of the ones from the grief. You kind of recognize it because it looks terrible. You know, um, they must have gotten something moving. Maybe it was the one the commander was supposed to fly away. <laughs> it looks <laughs> oily from a distance. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if someone is good at sort of. Social deduction, intent, or sure. <laughs> sensing truth. I'm oh. muted. Sorry, I've been there trying to talk. Oh, <laughs> I think so. Uh, I have hyper awareness, so I could try sure. to see if I know it says person you can observe, but can we apply that to just someone Absolutely. I'm hearing? Okay, yes. then I'd love to, yeah, to see if um, I pick up on anything uh, strange or nefarious about this person. Mm, I like it. So. 
So this is definitely right. Hyper awareness. Uh, you could make a check, or uh, this is a thing that you can just do with momentum anytime you want. Oh. Is just spend ah, one to obtain information. Right. Do we Ask have any me momentum? We do. We, we have two. Oh, we Pile do. it up. Okay. Use then it. I, yeah. Okay. I'll spend one momentum to. Uh, yeah, to so, ask about this person's intentions. Give me two questions about okay. the, the person. I'm ready. I would like to know, um, are, do they have our best interest in mind? Do they actually want <laughs> us to survive this? You think so. You think that this person is really out looking for survivors and wants to report back that they are here. Um, they seem genuinely concerned. Okay. Um, Second question would be, are they someone who, well, I don't, yeah, I'll just ask it and then we'll see. Um, are they someone who might be like exceedingly loyal to the commander? <laughs> uh, interesting. Um, from, uh, from this conversation, although we, we have not had the whole thing, you think that this person is out alone in the Thopter, just a single pilot kind of searching around, so they must be a trusted person back on the Grief. Um, the command structure back there is is interesting, so that would put them into close proximity to the commander. Um, I, I am not sure this conversation, unless you get more detailed with who the casualty is, uh, yeah, would tell you more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah, and with my fork and Spoon and knife, I signal, I think, I think they're above board. Yeah. All right. So they asked who the casualty was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I say, I say, okay, well, um, you know, under the articles of the spacing guild, you realize whenever a, a, a traveler has passed that you cannot spread that information until it's been approved by the governing house. So, but since you're uh, helping us uh, out, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Huh. That uh, that it was unfortunately the commander of the ship. So oh, what I know, <laughs> Com C Commander Globus, Commander Globus, unfortunately passed, and uh, we're gonna get this sorted out. But don't panic, anyone. Just head back to the ship and tell Jaris uh, Obergon what what I've told you. Pick us up. Isn't Jaris with us? No. First. Oh, oh, is Jaris with us? No, you. Uh, think no. So. I think I thought we traded Jaris for for the for commander. the commander. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, by, you know, by the decree of House Posh, please report this to, uh, Obergon. Obergon will know what to do from there. Okay, okay. I, so... And I, I try to make this sound really official, like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Totally, probably making all this shit up. Okay, I mean, <laughs> it sounds like it, but if you are able, I mean, it's, we're feudal enough. If you decide to assert your authority like that. Yeah. I mean, it could stick. I am, um... I'm asserting my authority. Well, this, this okay. This is going to be. I, I want you to give me a communicate test on this one. All right, we're running low on momentum. We're stranded out in the desert. Excuse me. How many? Hey, how many threat do you have, Rich? Oh, I got four. Um, I don't. This is only a difficulty two task. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do. Yeah. Uh, so that would be. You say communicate, which isn't my best. Um, I think this is duty. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm gonna go duty. <laughs> I would. It sounds like duty or power. So duty will work. Yeah. Oh, power is better though. Uh, I'm gonna go power. I like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the extra dice. I will take it. <laughs> sure. Because power also works. All um, right, and I'll roll two right, dice. Bring it on. Yeah. Difficulty two. And I have no focus, so here we go. Boom! I got one success. One, one success. Big failure. One complication. All right. So you you've attempted to assert your authority, and you think it is. I mean. You did it, right? Uh, they, you hear some grumbling from up top, and you, you feel like you have not made a friend up there today. Um, uh, I would, I would expect that uh, that they are probably going to go back report to uh, to uh, Jaris Obergon. Blanked on a name. Thank you very much. Um, about what happens, um, but probably also leads to a little bit of gossip. You know, you made all those friends up there already. Mm. <laughs> We'll see if we're full friends with them when we get back. Uh, but I'm not going to give you a complication, just that that part of the plot. Excellent. I love it. All right. Um, so, so okay, okay. Well, fine. We'll, uh, how, House of Posh, I'll keep all your secrets. I'll let, uh, I'll let Obergon know what's going on. And uh, I guess, well, yeah, we'll send some people to meet you. Um, hopefully not too long up at the Alberic. Is that, that fair? I mean, that's a good place for you to resupply and make sure that everyone is safe. Excellent. Just wait for support there. Sounds good. All right. 
There we go. All right. Uh, the the thopter kind of buzzes down. You uh, you see the the pilot kind of take a quick look at you outside, make sure the commander isn't there, and uh, and take off again. Uh, leaving you again to walk. All right. So so here's one thing um, that I do want to bring up is I have the the talent called rapid maneuver. Um, yeah. So this this is also in combination with my map. I should be able to cross this ground fairly well. Uh, kind of the bonus in it is uh, for the folks at home. Uh, rapid maneuver says you're fast, able to cross the uh, cross ground, find the shortest route, and bring yeah. uh, your tools to bear quicker than most. So uh, let's see, in a skill test to reach a destination quickly, I reduce difficulty by one, so on and so forth. Sounds so. good. I'm totally okay with that. I think that makes a lot of sense uh, using your, your rapid maneuver. You've got your map. I mean, you also have, of course, your personal suspenser. So if you oh, wanted yeah. to, to to take a little bit of a scouting look, uh, make sure you're on the right path. I mean, it's hard to find a shortcut when you're going on down a straight yeah. line, but I like this. Well, I, ha uh, I, ha I have one of the new Dune suspensers, so I can go a little bit <laughs> higher. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Not just bouncing around the little room. Yeah. That's uh, way up in the sky. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, difficulty one move check. Um, duty or uh, drive of your choice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, move. Uh, I'm going to go duty. I think this is still duty. Um, and then um, I guess uh, it's just going to be two dice plus my one auto success. Okay. There you go. And then I rolled two failures, but it doesn't. But I got one auto success. You got one auto success. All right, Worth. so we'll take that one. <laughs> yeah. So you you lay down the map, right? You kind of see the the thopter kind of buzz off in one direction uh, before heading off towards where where the grief is, kind of more behind you, circling around. But uh, you pinpoint that direction. You look at your map. Um, we've got Parmoon here to kind of help out with the the lay of the land as well, uh, up and down these dunes. You plot a path, and uh, where the thopter pilot thought you'd get there at some point tomorrow. Um, you are able to cross the distance in much less time. I like this. Uh, all right. Well, in that case, uh, the I mean, it's a it's a fast walk, but uh, also a long and painful walk. Mm -hmm. Drinking all these re oh, what's the best word? Reconstituted? No, that I don't want to say nice. recaptured. I think. Recaptured. recaptured. Oh wow! Yeah, like... Yum. Filtered <laughs> pee water. Mm. Hey, <laughs> don't blame me, baby. It's straight from the book. It's science fiction. <laughs> uh, living in the future. Um, Natural and, pumping and... action. Right. <laughs> um, soon enough. Feces um... is stored in the thigh pads. <laughs> that is That's detailed. Right. <laughs> that is That's the right. thing. Canon, you know. You Canon. Canon. <laughs> Canon. That's the uh -huh. one. That's the one. Yep. You can't. I can't get out book? of my head. Yep. Mm -mm. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Kaylee, wow. just walk up Let's, behind Rohai and slap his thighs. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Gruesome. Gruesome. Gross. Uh, <laughs> let's move forward. All right. Yeah. Uh, soon enough, uh, you see off in the distance, um, you see it before you can hear it, This, uh, these, these just like belching plumes of sand in the air, sand and smoke. And, uh, and as you kind of get closer and closer, you start hearing the, the dirty, like the, the loud noises of this this very angled kind of beetle shaped monstrosity of it's kind of hovering above sucking spice up and launching it up into the sky behind it. Um, it's definitely the harvester that you're looking for. And, uh, and given enough time, uh, you certainly start heading up there, uh, kind of seeing it swirling around the, some of the tracks that they've got, keeping this thing moving, keeping it from, from making like a regular pattern on the ground. Uh, these things are pretty dangerous, but, mm -hmm. um, They've they've learned ways to work around having a sandworm immediately chomp it. Uh, although that's as long as it's in good good condition, that should be the case. Whew. All right. Um, so soon enough, you are you are kind of walking past it. It's moving slow. I mean the 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 sand flying up in the air. It's making a lot of work as it kind of trundles forward, and uh, and you eventually make your way up. You can see kind of written on the side in in fading paints the uh, the alberic there and actually i mean when you look it actually says uh oh where was it it says the alberic there we go let's just live with that um <laughs> if you see a hatch kind of high up on the side like on the big angular side of this thing coming up and around and uh, kind of submarine-ish and this this figure kind of pops up uh again kind of wearing their still suit looks pretty rugged uh 
huge like shirt tied around their head, just dripping with sweat. Um, and uh, and they call out, "Who in the world are you?" <laughs> Greetings. Who the hell are you? Uh, me. I'm I'm Metzos. This is my ship. Surprise! Who's inspection. asking? <laughs> <laughs> Calls down. They said surprise inspection, <laughs> and you just hear some laughing from inside. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, we 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 got a big job to do here. We can't just, um, you know, pick up. A we'll let you go of, about your work until we're picked up. We oh, are good, good. we are from the house of Posh, and we are Thorn. Our Thopter crashed. We are survivors of a crash. Oh yeah, we we heard about that. Yeah, the that uh, that pilot flew past, told us what was going on. <laughs> That's uh, well, it's like your first day on on Dune, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. No. Wow. Too bad. That's too bad. Wait. Kind well, of stop, and you see most the focus on Parmen. <laughs> Most of our first day. Right. Yeah, yeah. We wouldn't be alive if it was my first day. Yeah. Fair You're... enough. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. Uh. Well. Well. Look. We 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 got a job to do here. You can hang out here on the side if you want to. You know. Uh, we actually. Like to... soon. We actually Come are inside. here to uh, do an inspection of sorts. Not really an inspection, but just to observe and see if um, we can be of service. Oh, uh, I don't think so. I think you're probably, I mean, don't need to be of service or anything. No, no, I don't mean we're to good. you. I mean to oh. the Imperium. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, um, do you sorry, not want you... us on your harvester? Oh, I mean, it's just, it's real. It's, you can tell it's real loud down here. I don't know if you'd like it. I mean, if you, if you want to. I don't know. It looks like you're hurt. You're hurt. Maybe you just want to like lay out in the sand and kind of no. enjoy yourselves until, yeah, no. it's uh, it's a little cramped in here. You don't happen to have a Corinth working with you. We're looking for Mr. Euler. Uh, yeah. Right. That's weird. Uh, we'll come inside now. Yes. You said, we you actually said... are sent by the Imperium, so you cannot deny us access to your harvest. I want to. Like, I want to. Can I try to figure out what this guy is afraid of, sure. like specifically? Yeah. Like, I like, like that. Obtain information, like specifically, like what he's afraid. What about us is he specifically afraid of? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm. I'm doing this as a twisted mint hat. Oh. Yeah. Um. That's always fun. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, I think that's just. Oh yeah, that's the thing where it's like I can get an extra momentum for every die I buy, for adding to threat. So I'd like to. Buy one extra threat. Okay. But that will get us an extra momentum. So, like, in the pool. Right. I believe. Gosh, okay. What am I going to do with all this threat, you know? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm up in the stakes. Uh, <laughs> maybe not the wisest thing I've ever done. But uh, instead of this, what is it? Understand. Okay. Maybe power, this one. Okay. The weakness of my enemies good. is an inspiration. Hmm. Okay. I like it. Is that, um, is that I work? think that, that makes a lot of sense, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is, I mean, honestly, they, they're definitely, you can tell that they're being cagey up there. Uh, this, uh, uh, excuse me, this met sauce up here. Um, they uh, being a little odd about everything that's going on. So this is going to be a difficulty. Uh, let's see. You're, you're just trying to understand what their thing is. So we'll call that a difficulty two. Okay. So am I, am I doing three because I bought the extra one with the yes, die? Yes. So you, okay. you got three dice. Okay. Submit using a focus. Is it? Is, do I have one um, here? Uh, to check out your character. Let's see. Kind of understanding the the emotional state, or or kind of the what exactly this person fears. Um, yeah, like what's he specifically trying to? What yeah. what like what's the common thread in the things that seem to be upsetting him specifically? Gotcha. Or yeah, about I, our so suggestions. Taking a look at these, I'm not sure uh, that your focuses apply. Okay. This situation. Totally fun. All right. Okay. Let's see. Hey, whoa. Are those? Those seem to be. Should I have only done one? Those thing? seem to be good. No, no, no. You, yeah, those you seem to be for good. an extra one. They all okay. succeed. Succeed. You get one momentum back. Very nice work. Um, 
Now, the thing staring. I wanted to check with that ability was if you got something special out of it as well, or do I just get a threat because you spent a momentum? I get an, uh, We get an extra momentum in the pool, I believe. Generate one bonus momentum for each die you bought by adding the threat. I see. Oh, um, did I... No, I got it. Basically, what it means is because you got three successes, you get one momentum back, right? But uh, you get to ask a free question. You're, you're basically that extra momentum that you obtained. You immediately get to ask a question with it and uh, and learn what's going on. Okay. So uh, I will say that you you take a look at this character and they're definitely that cagey. They do not want you on here, right? Period. Um, you uh, you mentioned people coming to rescue, right? And uh, and that didn't seem to phase them a whole lot. That didn't seem to bother them. Uh, you sense that they are the the tiny little ruler of a tiny little empire right here. And uh, they don't want any threats to their power. Huh. Okay. Uh, so if you have a specific question you want to ask, feel free. Yeah. How, how could I threaten his power? Let's see. Um, I mean, definitely easily you think that... Uh, Const like uh, like talking up the House of Posh and talking about how you are here, you like you know continuing to to make that imperial connection clear, all that sort of stuff, uh, making it seem like you are the ones in control of the situation will probably help out. Okay. Um, you think that is the easiest road to success? Hey guys, we uh, let's just go. Let's just go. Right? We don't. I uh, just sort of like start walking with the group, just like kind of trying to are walk around him. Are you saying I should indicate that they were uncooperative on the form to the Empire? That would be serious for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think it's worth mentioning, I don't. I didn't get it. I didn't get his name, and I don't want to ask again. Yeah, and they're I mean, lose their jobs. Was, 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 As a representative of the guild, too, I'm gonna have to fill a report. Um, yeah. The guild? Uh, yeah, they're, they're trying to look over your shoulder, see if they've got any forms and hands. Or um, <laughs> I, I start digging through my uh, my, my pockets that I don't probably have on this still suit. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm uh, I'm pretending to make notes in my uh my little crystal my little crystal book that I have that we never found. What was it? I'm just like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> ooh, I hate right. to see it. I'm okay. a doctor, okay. so nobody can understand my writing. So I just write stuff. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> um, uh, Metzos kind of like starts stepping back and, and as looking around to see what you're doing and exactly what's happening, the, the door does kind of clear and uh, and the first of you are able to climb inside. Um, and Metzos will give up soon after that. Um, kind of uh, as you get inside, it is this this cramped, badly lit interior. It's just, it's just there's pounding noises. It's super loud, um, much dirtier than the grief for sure um and uh, and it's just this strong cinnamon scent everywhere um this is definitely they're they're harvesting they're not processing it here so it's just these these massive uh bags and crates and, and everything else of just just spice that they're going to unload once they get back to the grief um there seem to be about two dozen people here in a space that is is meant for uh you know maybe a dozen um and uh and mezzos comes in kind of behind you slamming the the door shut uh crossing his arms saying all right so so you're here uh go ahead and do your inspection uh and we'll uh you know keep going about our business huh mm -hmm. on it yeah that's how it works yep. good good your work, we just need Excellent. to note each of your names so we know who's who ah sure well captain mezzos right here and uh you start going around, getting everybody's names, and, and they're, they're all kind of giving you a little bit of attitude because the captain is as well. The captain let you in, but now you're, like, in the domain, right? So mm -hmm. not, not on friendly terms at all, but willing to let you go through with this. I, you go around, and yes. And I write down everyone's name. I mean, fair. Because, you know. They keep looking down. Absolutely. I just remember um, it forever. <laughs> I drink too much to remember it forever. Uh, fair enough. This is now a room in your mental palace, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can see all these people later. Those people I met that time. It's like, ah, yeah. I'll remember that. Right. And as you go through asking people their names, uh, uh, one person at some point says uh, says that their name is Corinth Euler. Mm -hmm. um, they are, are back here in kind of working on the uh, the harvester, making sure that it's in good working order, uh, messing again around with the engines on the thing. Um, I would say that it's 
Brad Montana on first look seems like they're doing uh, reasonably good stuff. Hey there, Oiler. What are you working on here? Oh, wait. I, I forgot. I have a southern accent. Hey there. <laughs> hey there, Oiler. The crash took it out. <laughs> what's what's going on over here? What, you, what are you up to? Uh, uh, Oiler, like, looks up. Uh, after after giving a name, kind of went right back to work. It says, I'm sorry. Do you need something? I am busy here. Yeah. Uh, a lot of work to do on a, on a machine like this. What, what uh, was I'm going to do it in one day. Okay. What, what was the name on the last ship uh, that we were on? I forgot. The Grief. The Grief. Uh, Mr. Oiler, yeah. I, I do Grief. believe that I saw your name on the records on The Grief. Yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah, tip, you know, I, was, uh, I was looking over some of your handiwork there, and, well, you know, it looked a little bit more sloppy than what you're doing here. Yeah, I bet it was. Uh, I keep getting moved around different departments. Like, I, I'm an engineer. I work on engines. I don't work on... All this other nonsense. I mean, we've got specialists for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Commander you... sends me over there to work on that for a while, and now I'm down here dealing with this ridiculous ship. Yeah. Did you do any work on those ornithopters while you were there? On the ornithopters? Yeah. No. No. I work on engines. That's what I do. Like big, huge engines. They take do... lots of maintenance. Do I, I trust him? I've been doing him? this for a long time. Uh, do I trust him? That's a real good question. <laughs> um. Let's see. Um, they are. Mm -hmm -hmm. Uh, they certainly don't like you. I mean, you can tell that kind yeah. of quick. But you, oh, you sense they don't like anybody. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Do you trust them? How are you going to figure out whether you do or not? Uh, well, so, uh, you know, and I, I, I figure what will happen is this conversation will go on a little and I'll ask mm -hmm. a few other poking and prodding questions. And yeah. then hopefully using my deductive reasoning to kind of understand what, what actually is going on with him. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. That sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah. You oh. can tell that this person, if you, if you tried to, um, you know, use your authority on this, anything like that, it just would not work. They would just throw it right back in your face. Okay. Um, but, uh, but by asking questions, by using some of your mechanical expertise as well, um, I think you could make that check. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, th I think understand and then maybe, maybe duty since it has to do with sure. the house of Pasha at whole as a whole. Uh, so that's going to be two dice, and then I do have a focus. So let's uh, let's see how badly I fail this one. Take it away. <laughs> Difficulty two. There you All go. All right. Well, I um, Perfect. <laughs> did something. You. <laughs> wow. So a critical success, which is fantastic, and also a complication. And I have been uh, real nice about complications so far. But let's take a quick look at the list. <laughs> um, right. It's complications that we can add to to the game at this point. Um, include. But this uh, is a for... success, just to make sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is true. Is, um, I just want to make sure it's a success. Yeah, oh, right. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. Cool. Uh, this is a success with a cost because there was a complication. Um, I like so, that. So let's see. I think just being in here, um, you. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to give you the, the complication, uh, which I think fits this one really well. There's a whole list of complications in the book uh, before understanding. One of them is misinformed. And I think that's the one that uh, I'm going to apply to you for a short time. Okay, and that's, I uh, understand uh, a complication tied to understand. Yes. Yeah. So understanding is a little bit difficult for you just because you're you're trying to like think about all the information you've been giving and you're not sure that it lines up. Um, it's kind of bending your brain a little bit yeah but um the the sense that you get from from uh old oiler here is uh that they uh they don't know much about working on on the compressors they certainly you you don't sense have any idea about how to sabotage it they're mostly angry that uh, they've been stuck out here they keep getting transferred uh the biggest thing that you can tell is that they hate the commander with a passion <laughs> Well, well, oh, Euler, I, I have some unfortunate news for you. And that is, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard by now, but the commander has recently passed. So, um, oh, 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 sorry, sorry, say that one more time. One more well, time. Well, well, the commander's recently passed. And so I, I don't I don't think you'll be shifted around quite as much. Um, could could you let me know who else has oh. been shifted around with you this constantly? Hold on, I just gotta, I just gotta let my joy kind of yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no 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 I, li or I like to cut your i like to cut your jib but um when, when i see his relief i uh i decide <laughs> to speak up and i say 
Do not be so soothed. You see, the last thing he did, and with him dead, it's hard to prove otherwise, is uh, suggest that you were responsible for sabotage on the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, me? That I'm responsible for sabotage? That's that's ridiculous. Uh, the, the doctor does speak true. Huh. We've got the documents to prove it. Yeah. Okay, you will okay. want to answer, uh, given the evidence that exists. I mean, the the commander kept me moving around for the last week or so, just because I kept being, um, uh, I guess he would have said insubordinate, but uh, I would have said rational. And uh, oh, well, so a lot of this is just punishment. I mean, that's all I thought it was. Did he want you to do something that you didn't want to do? Uh, n no, I just, I just don't like the... I mean, didn't, I guess. But you said you were um, being rational. What do you mean? Oh, I just I just can't stand that. Uh, so it just doesn't get anything done. The place is a mess. I mean, we could have that place up and running, looking spotless and clean. We could get all the spice we needed. But uh keeps the entire place bogged down to save money. And that is, ah. I mean, it's just not a way to run a ship, you know? What? Yeah. Does he do that? No. Does he then take that money and keep it? Um, Wouldn't the money return to the Imperium if he's saving money? I mean, maybe, I guess. I mean, our, our, our money's coming through, and he didn't really get out of here or anything. He just stayed in the ship. So but there's he's been got deliberate a strong sabotage. box full of money. There's What's been the deliberate sabotage. Who's responsible for that? Are you saying you did not do this sabotage? Uh, no, not not at all. Um, no. Uh, I mean, in fact, as I... <laughs> we... Uh, Look, 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 I got into trouble with uh, with the commander there. We were we were meeting about it. Uh, he was telling me that I was going to be reassigned for uh, for a while as this punishment. It was, uh, you know, we, it was me, the, the captain, uh, and uh, and Obergon was there as well. She's the one who suggested, actually, that uh, that maybe it would be like getting reassigned instead of uh, just getting kicked off the ship permanently. It might be the, the best thing. Seemed that she's always looking out for me. Uh, I'm going to work this as an interrogation just to try to verify it. If, do I think they're telling the truth? Do you want me to make a roll? I think uh, at this point we've had a couple of rolls. Um, I think you're feeling uh, that, that Corinth kind of doesn't know much about the sabotage. Okay. You're putting that together. Um, yeah. No idea. All right. And you say, my good friend, uh, you, you know, because because me, me, me and Jars Obergon have have a long history. You say, my oh, good right, friend, right. my good friend, uh, Obergon was there with you whenever uh, you were getting in a little bit of trouble and getting moved around a bit. Yeah, I mean, we've been we've been friends for a while, so uh, so mm -hmm. she makes sure to kind of talk to the commander and make sure that uh, that I get to stay on the ship. You know, I uh, working for that guy is the worst, but uh, you know, she made it bearable. Interesting. Interesting. I see. I see. Well, my friends, I, I do believe this this man here. And um, I think I might have some questions for my good old friend, Jarus. Uh, are they going to come pick us up? Somebody was. <laughs> Some, somebody's supposed to be here a little bit later. Maybe yeah. early tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, You're that listening. Late? <laughs> you uh, you actually start hearing some noises, right? The uh, the comms start squawking over there, and one of the the folks from the ship heads over. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like uh, there's a rescue mission on pretty quickly, actually. Uh, there we go. Some folks here to fly you out of here, which is perfect. Yeah, um, should be about an hour. Excellent. Well, well, Mr. Oiler, I'm gonna keep your name on mind because because you have some good ideas. You might you might end I know. Up, you might end up back on that grief. But in a good way. So so you hang tight there. All right. All right. I'll just keep working on this thing. Hopefully it gets up and uh, back to full efficiency soon. That, that'd be that'd be most excellent. Let's head back down and starts getting to work with some wrenches. It's great. Yeah. Um, you notice that as you've been talking as well, especially I would say Giselle, like I like kind of checking the place out, hanging back, um, that uh, Metzos is giving you all the eye i mean watching every single thing you do um kind of being careful to, to step around and, and check in on you all but but lets you talk to oiler kind of on your own mm -hmm. um and uh yeah when you come back there is uh he's definitely uh, sitting over on a table kind of chatting with someone uh kind of looking your way constantly as uh, as you kind of wrap that conversation up was his name mentioned in the logs at all Oh, um... And, and maybe I'll ask Drohai, uh, since he's good at remembering this sort of stuff. Yeah. 
I can remember that easily. Uh, right. <laughs> I am going now going to use my remember stuff ability. Of course, uh, of course. Right. Understand. Go back. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was there. It's as if it were yesterday. Uh, oh, I uh, oh, you may attempt a difficulty zero understand test. Is that is do we do I even need to do I roll for that? How does that work? I, I don't think you need to roll because uh, success seems guaranteed if it's difficulty zero. Right. I think you're yeah. OK. Um, especially if it's just recalling the past rates. Um, Ooh, I take it back because you oh, could use momentum. Oh, yeah, that's how it works. Okay, momentum. yeah, that's how it generates momentum. So roll, yeah. what, two then? Roll two. Yeah, I'm not, let's say, understand. New ability, I like it. Oop, yeah. Finally get snicking that in under the wire. All right, um, using focus? Yeah, because of remembering. That's, that's my thing. Attention, yeah, here we go. Here we go. One success that generates one point of momentum that you can ask to use some questions um, about the stuff, but I will give you the, the basic rundown, of course. Um, as you were taking a look, it does look like groups get cycled through. Um, uh, the uh, excuse me, the ship, the Alberic, will at some point be kind of brought back up onto the the carryall for for processing and you know ostensibly cleaning, and they will get a little bit of a break before coming back down onto the surface again. So this is kind of there. Uh, Metzos is full-time gig. I would like to know yeah. if uh, what house is Metzos of? Are they of a house at all? Uh, yes. Um, let's see. They are of house. I'm going to go with Gantria. Okay. Since I made up a house. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, definitely the crew around here, I mean, they're, they're kind of uh, from about everywhere, which has been the case for most of the people on this, this ship. They just, they come here, they're working underneath Imperial supervision of some kind. Uh -huh. Cool. Yep. But yes, indeed. Um, so, uh, so real quick, two things are going to happen. Uh, number one is... Uh, Apparently, you've got an hour to kind of spend here on this ridiculous ship. It is cramped, and especially with more people in there, it's it's not a lot of fun being inside here. Um, but uh, you can certainly use it to rest. So if somebody, um, we we got rid of batter or excuse me, bruised on everyone already. Uh, the doctor. No. That was for the scene. For that scene. Yeah. For that. If it's needed, I could do it again because I can do it once per scene. Gotcha. I think actually, uh, given this rest, you were able to get rid of that. Okay. You can spend some some time kind of resting up uh, after your recent journeys, and uh, and that seems all right. Um, and uh, and I think that I also want to check in really quick on let's see who who is the most observant. Do you think of of this ragtag team of well, not heroes? <laughs> observant of sandworms. Me. Anything else? I don't have to True. care. Yeah. Um, I would say that, I'm, like, of people, maybe me. Okay. I have my hyper awareness. Good. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. You are poking around. Um, in that case, I think that you do notice something as you spend time in here. Um, for the rest of the time that you were on board, the captain stays seated on that table, uh, and as you kind of look around, there is uh, there are a couple crates underneath it. Um, he seems to be uh, trying to keep them out of your view. Huh. Hmm. <laughs> well, we clearly need to see what's in them. I take out my fork and spoon and knife and signal to the others. Check out the crates under the table. We need to see what's in those. Oh, uh, I'm going to signal cover me. I'll check it out. Okay. I'm going to walk like behind the, if it's possible, or to the extreme side of where this Metzos is sitting so that he has to turn to look at me. Okay. All right. Metzos was your name. Yes. Uh, captain. Captain Metzos. That's captain right. Metzos. Mm -hmm. How did Thank you become you. a captain? Tell me that about that. Oh, wow. Well, uh, that's a, that's a good question. I've spent most of my life on a ship like this. And so just, just rising through the ranks, you know, well, no, that's not true. I didn't just rise through the ranks. I was very heroic, very mm. heroic. Of course. So, uh, so I was promoted very you know, much faster than I should have been. Mm -hmm. It was great. <laughs> amazing. What an amazing did I, story. <laughs> Tell me more. Did I hear a die being rolled? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, oh, you did um, You're just mm, focused oh. on me. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. Yes. <laughs> It seems to be working. Um, so this subtle step to kind of sneak through and find out what's going on. Um, let's It'll be a see. move roll. Um, what kind of difficulty mm -hmm. am I looking at, do you think? 
Uh, so you have, I mean, Metsos is here, although distracted, I like this, so I'm going to count this as, a, as an asset that is working in your favor. It is still going to be a difficulty to move test to get through without okay. Metsos noticing. All right, I'm a roll of power because um, power is only for those who know how to corrupt it. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Amazing. So <laughs> give that a shot. <laughs> uh, I don't really have any focuses that really work in this. That is fair, yeah. Oh, but I'm fine. Oh, but you are excellent. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, you take a look and you, I mean, as, as Metzos is telling this wonderful story about that time that they uh, dragged probably like 20 people away from the sandworm out here wow. uh, you know it was really seemed seemed like a lot of work mm -hmm. um, but uh, Parmoon notices the signs of a fellow smuggler uh, mm -hmm. you look under there and there are several barrels of, of raw spice they look pretty small um, and uh, they've got a symbol kind of marked on them they are kind of pushed back uh, and they're hidden behind a, a tarp what's that symbol um taking a look it's uh um let's see i think this is gonna be hmm what house i'm trying to decide if i want to take your last momentum for this to ask this question uh but no i'll let you keep it you look carefully and with this good distraction going uh you're able to get back there and you just see the outline of a symbol it looks like the icon of an app there's you see the y you see the e there's an L. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna signal angrily. We've got some <laughs> Yelp stuff here. Uh, the cult of Yelp and their un... What was it like? Unprocessed spice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this uh, would definitely... Uh, I mean, this this would sell for quite a bit uh, if they were able to get it off the planet into the hands of the the, uh, the cult of Yelp. They uh, Those Yelpers do not have a presence on Arrakis at all. Um, were they there at all for like the the pre meeting when we were about to figure out like who can get some space here? No, just those uh you know those uh butter folks. Yeah. They were the only ones. Doesn't oh. ring a bell. Clicking buttons. Don't mind me. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Um, if you take a look, it is well hidden, but uh, but there's also quite a bit of it there. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna signal that quite blatantly to the crew, to my my crew. The doctor won't stay quiet for long, but does anyone else want to take this? I mean, I am holding back because Brad Montana always wants to open his mouth. Huh. <laughs> um, I see. Well, what's our play here? Do we expose him right now, or what, what, what's our play? Y'all are the social ones. Well, I don't know how to talk I'll, to people. I'll say out loud. Well, in in some time, we will be out of your hair, will we not? Um, the rescue doctor will come and take us away, leaving you here. You'll be right. so happy to go back to your normal business, favoring the Empire. Uh, it's, tr it's true. It's true. It is It is tough work down here. There may be more heroic tasks in store for me. But uh, but yeah, soon enough you'll be gone, and uh, I hope you report back favorably on on all of us here, on the Alberic. We're doing good work for the Empire. Love that Empire. <laughs> big fans yes. big fans all around yeah though no, they're, yeah. they're doing good work never never yeah. had a complaint the patisha emperor um the imperial truths there yeah great yeah. people uh, i've heard about absolutely love them <laughs> so i'm like like i'm yeah. like trying to like 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 i'm faking an enthusiasm about a specific team that i know nothing about i'm like mm, yeah for sure <laughs> and we just have to check this off the list but uh all spice amounts are accounted for of course Oh, yeah. Look, we're out here. We're making our quotas. We're, we're doing all the work that needs to be done. You know, we got uh, we got this uh, uh, person back here fixing stuff, you know, uh, new recruits. Uh, uh, the, uh, he'll probably go back. So soon. lucky to have you, Captain. Uh, and I no agree. One do, no one do influences from any of the other houses. I don't. Uh, why? There, no. I mean, no, no. Of That's a not. no. Of course. That's, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's ridiculous. No, I mean, uh, we make sure all of our spice gets sent up to the, the, the Empire. I mean, they can't do a whole lot down here on the planet's surface. That's uh, it's not allowed, but still, you know. Who them fellers uh, who's, who's given us problems? Um, uh, what, House of Dean? No. Wait, that, that's not a real thing. 
Um, <laughs> no, no, it, it was it was the uh, the fault of Yelp, the the cult of Yelp, them fellers. Cult They've been giving Yelp. us a, a hard time. You ain't seen any uh, uh-huh. any of them snooping around. We did. We, we we know they don't got no not much of a presence here on on Arrakis, but nope, I they, think uh, I think they'd nope. like to get hold of that spice. Uh, sorry, I think hearing some uh, signal chatter coming in. I think uh, over there on them them uh, those comms. Uh, I look uh, at the okay. other men around and I say, "You all agree with the captain? No undue influence." You look Are around and they chance. <laughs> they they don't look. I mean, you've been here for for an hour or so, kind of resting up. They don't look super friendly towards you. So as they kind of look around, uh, you see them look at each other before saying, "No, captain, everything's here. It's just fine." Captain's that, doing great work. That's good to hear. Last time we found some cult of, uh, the cult of Yelp fellers. Oh man, the uh, the head of our house was not nice. Whew. I don't want to yeah. watch that again. Can Swear I'm I... hearing something on the comms. <laughs> Can I yeah, have spicy poops like somehow push a barrel over and like spill it on the ground? <laughs> are so, they gonna yes. aren't they gonna kill us though if we see if we've seen the evidence of their crimes, like I'm well, gonna be kill them, darn. <laughs> Fair enough. We got was... we got B. I'm I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, B will keep us Why, alive. Why though? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you sure? Where is this confidence right? coming from? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've never whether... we've literally never been in a fight. <laughs> right. Do we want to push it to that, or do we want to? That's the question. <laughs> like I said, there are about two dozen people in here besides you. And, uh-huh. uh, and you, I mean, you, you came out of that crash and I, I looked at your assets. I don't think there are a whole lot of weapons in there. So it's going to be spending some time gathering some things from the ship to fight back. We could yeah, try but... to steal one. What, an ornithopter? <laughs> one of the little barrels or something. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, it's still some spice. Yeah, I apparently own an entire spice harvester. <laughs> oh, uh, is it nearby? Uh... <laughs> is it this one? <laughs> uh, no, oh, no, it's wow. like a couple kilometers away. <laughs> I didn't even realize. That's great. I didn't um... realize that either. <laughs> I just like I really wanted that, and I did not consider the implications. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so with that in mind, uh, you have a pretty good idea of probably exactly what's happening here, right? They are um, yeah. gathering the extra barrels just like they do on your personal, you know, your mm-hmm. contact, your spice harvester that you know. Um, it's how you often get some of yours, I suppose. It's oh, probably yeah. direct purchase oh, from the, the planet so surface. Legal. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, we don't we didn't necessarily can... need the evidence. We, we know if we send someone else to come here, they can bust them. And... Yeah. Do we have, do we have, um, uh, radio connection to the grief yet uh yeah. you do actually because this ship has has that kind of connection yeah I, um yeah i'd like to make a contact and i'd like to ask uh that whenever they get here to have uh jaris albergon come onto the ship um to to check out a few things with us oh okay mm-hmm. well uh honestly as you were kind of starting to check in uh there is call coming back from the the grief or actually from the thopter that's on its way over here mm-hmm. um sounds like they are, are going to be here in just a few minutes they'll be touching down on the sands just outside um you know let's uh let the the survivors come out we'll take them back to the grief and uh and make sure they're all healed up and back on their way can't let the house of posh get into any problem uh out here on the sands and uh and you of course since you were just checking in on that you recognize the friend the uh the voice of your friend obergon perfect calling in Oh, but gone. Why don't you uh, you all come on down here? Our, our 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 mutual friend Oilers here, and I thought thought we ought to do a little bit of catching up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, absolutely. That makes uh, that makes plenty of sense. I'll uh, I'll see you on board. Just uh, make sure they uh, you know get out some of the good stuff, the good rations. You know, you know, look <laughs> through them. Make sure they don't have that. Uh, that terrible one the commander likes. Yeah, and, and remember those yeah. suspicions we had about about our our, our friend Oiler. Yeah. I think, oh yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. No, you were right. He is exactly who we thought he was. He is a good guy, and you ought to come down here, and and we're gonna congratulate him on the good work that he did on the grief. That is excellent. We love to hear that. And I mean, we've given uh we've given uh Oiler plenty of chances. So if you 
if uh, if you see the need uh, to to go ahead and execute justice, feel free. I mean, don't we'll uh, we'll back you up. I'll let the I'll let the oh well, I would let the commander know. Um, yeah, go right ahead. Fantastic, but uh, you know that's that's you, you know Char, you know you're better than me at that kind of stuff. Remember that time we got in that fight in that one bar? I got busted up, and you were the last <laughs> one standing. Oof. Oh yeah, that was quite the uh -huh. fight. Yeah, that was that uh, was a good one. Yeah, definitely uh -huh. a memorable moment. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, we're landing right now, so I'll uh, I'll see you in just a few minutes. And you hear uh, the thopter come to a stop. I mean, they're practice, right? Even um, these, this uh, thopter landing is very slow and very careful, meant to be very gentle. You don't hear anything, but you hear kind of the, the flapping of the thopter wings as it comes close. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, Metzos points at a crew member. They pop open that hatch. And unless you're doing anything else beforehand, you look over and see uh, see Obergon hop inside. I wave Obergon over. I say, come on, come meet our friend Euler. Ah, <laughs> look at that. It's uh, right there. I source of constant problems. I mean, it's... Yeah, uh, yeah. Obergon, remember, re remember when you were telling me that you didn't really know this fella at all? Yeah, I mean, yeah. generally, I don't... Oh, my God. Yeah. I, Euler, I thought you guys were friends. Now, now, who's lying to me? Because I think everybody should be friends. And if you're not friends, <laughs> let's make y'all friends right now. I, I'm just saying, while I'm a, the, the second in command, I, I can't be friends with anyone. I can be friendly. I mean, that's that's the difference here, I think. Oh, sometimes, oh, sometimes, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, misunderstood, yeah. I misunderstood yeah. Euler. Euler said you were friends from way back, and oh. you were saving his hide all over the place. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think I just, you know, stood in the way and made sure, made sure things went well here on, on the grief. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. Well then let's get on out of here. I, you know, I'm going to fly to Copter. That's great. just the way things go. I don't, I'm not going to take no for an answer. Oh, you're uh, okay. All yeah. right. Yep. Uh huh. I mean, I suppose you might as well. Uh, you always were a better pilot than I was. Um, I start making and, my way uh, towards the Thopter. All right, so everyone's currently still on board the the harvester down here, right? There's the mm -hmm. the hatch, but you start heading over towards the hatch, mm -hmm. and uh, and you see really quickly, really obviously, Obergon's eyes go right over to Metzos. They just make eye contact, uh, and you see a couple quick nods. Mm -hmm. Um, so, <laughs> all right, ready? Uh, I'm want to use my mastered arms ability and give some yeah. quick orders. As this these this group, <laughs> I want to uh, create this uh, at the start of a dual skirmisher battle scene. I can we are. <laughs> select something. I'm going to select the rest of the party as my unit of troops, which okay. uh, will will give them a quality of plus one for the next conflict. I don't know what that's going to do, but maybe it'll do something. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think let's let's find out. Yeah, I don't, um... I don't know exactly because. <laughs> We don't have weapons, so I'm just trying to boost us as a team, even if it doesn't Absolutely. actually do anything. I'm no, I that's, like that. That's my call. I'm right. We're definitely entering a skirmish conflict, which is what any melee is in this game. Um, so taking a look at that at the start of this scene, um, you're going to select the party as a unit of troops. Um, that is probably going to make more sense in a battle scene. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. This is this kind of like in this moment, I would say that probably you could use it in a skirmish to like find, holy cow, that big, huge, heavy wrench over there that seems like an awesome melee weapon or, you know, something that you could find that right. would be like quality one. Um, I'll, something I'll, that do you would carry around. I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll pick up a big old heavy wrench and use it as a club quality All right. one. Sounds good. So you've got that almost immediately as things begin. And I mean, looking around, uh, the nods happen, but the the rest of the, the group hasn't kind of gotten completely focused yet. Um so uh, so we're going to start this scene off. Uh, skirmishes are a little bit weird. All conflicts are a little odd in Dune. I mean, they're not weird. This is the way they work. Um, they uh, they kind of bounce back and forth from you to me uh, in terms of initiative. Instead of like rolling and seeing what our turn order is going to be, it just goes back and forth from me to you. Um, anytime it's your turn that you want to, um, you can spend two momentum to hang on to initiative and give it to another one of the team. Um, otherwise it goes to me instead. Um, so if you are generating lots of momentum, you can take like a massive amount of turns all at the same time. Uh, otherwise we go back and forth. Um, 
You'll also notice that up until now, we haven't talked about like, you know, hit points or anything like that, like a lot of games. <laughs> um, it's because this game doesn't quite have any. Um, instead, you have battle scores. And because this is a battle conflict, those are your hit points for this kind of conflict. All right. Um, all right. Um, all the rolls that we're going to make during any sort of conflict, they are um, uh, roll-offs, basically, between you and who you are attacking. Um, so say on your turn that you want to take up that huge wrench and you're going to swing it at, like, Metsos, let's say. Um, not telegraphing anything. Um, I am going to roll for Metsos uh, to give the difficulty of your attack. Okay. Um, if you win, then you deal two points of damage plus the quality of your item against their battle score. Okay. So there's a little bit of tracking, but usually you're either doing two or three damage if you have a good asset on your team. Now, um, if our battle, yeah. if, if we take damage to our battle score, does that reduce our battle dice as well? Does not, no. Okay. That's just, uh, that's just you. Um, when you reach zero... <laughs> And this is just tracking off to the side, basically, on a piece of paper. Uh, when you reach zero, if you want to, you can. You are defeated, which does not mean down. You are just kind of like out of this combat scene. Um, you can certainly spend two momentum to be like, nah, uh and stay in. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll treat you as zero, but still in the scene, I suppose. All right. Um, and other than that, you may have wild abilities that do stuff that I'm not expecting, which I can't wait for. But... Uh, Ooh, one more thing I should say about a conflict. If you go and you just attack a minion and you are successful, they're done. That's it. They don't have hit points. <laughs> so, um, yeah. On your turn, when it is your turn, you either get to move, uh, which could move you around the scene, go and grab an asset or all sorts of other things, uh, or spend an action. Um, we're doing pretty theater of the mind, so you're either at close range uh, or you are not <laughs> in this tight little area here. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to have some distance, that's okay. Uh, and with that, I will go ahead and say that it sounds like the first person to take some initiative here and get moving is actually Bra uh, Bragent Ad Montana. That's what yeah. I was about to say. Um, <laughs> that, 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 se that seems appropriate. That's what was coming out of my mouth. So this this man at, or, uh, master at arms ability, excuse me, comes out. Uh, you immediately start reaching for a weapon. And uh, you're up first. All right. Well, uh, so, you know, of course, we're going with battle. And uh, I think that ties to power very well right now because I feel like I'm setting some stuff straight. Yeah. And that's that's what I want and that's what I need. So we're going to do that. Um, and then I'm going to roll two dice. Uh, and I don't have a focus for this. And I don't get okay. any pluses until after. Oh, and I have to spend a momentum for my uh, Master of Arms. But, I get, sure. but to make that a plus one, uh, that's just damage afterwards, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. You'll do three points of damage instead of two. All right, great. Then uh, let's do this. Who are you attacking? What's the plan? What's going oh, on? Oh, well, I'm, I'm I'm rushing close range to the captain. Or actually, oh. no. No, I'm rushing okay. close range to my dear friend, Obagon. Okay. That sounds good. So in that case, what I'm going to do is roll to see how difficult this check is going to be, right? Uh, I'm going to roll uh, Obergon's battle score. Oops. I'm going to roll Obergon's battle score. Oh, there it is. Haha, <laughs> I figured it out. Um, and for this check, let's see, this is going to be absolutely... This is uh, this is justice uh, on Obergon's side. Uh, we're just going to roll two dice here. Um, I think I'm going to spend... Let's make sure that I'm doing this right. I believe that what I'm going to do is spend my threat at this point. Because treachery is always good. Um, to... Uh, buy an extra d20 on this one so let's uh get rid of some threat and roll three dice using focus no uh all right so uh Ubergon only gets one success to try and defend against this all right uh, and that takes one of my threat away so take it away and uh your, your target rating is one okay and i th and i and i accidentally rolled before you rolled so if you look right above i got oh, one hey. success I see it. All right. Um, so you are successful. So you go in with your, your wrench flying um, and smack your dear old friend. Is that what happens? Yeah. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> yes. So uh, um, <laughs> uh, Obergon kind of screams out uh, and says, this is not how this is going to end. The House of Posh uh, will fall. And uh, but you do hit her. Uh, she's not down in a single hit because uh, she's got more battle than that, and is an important NPC, so she's got hit points. All right, what do you want to do with uh, the turn? I guess you have to 
I mean, you don't have any momentum to hold on to initiative, so it's got to go to me. Yep. All right. Um, yes. So spinning around, um, Obergon is going to turn to you and uh, very quickly pull out a, a pistol. Uh, just aim it right at you, right? Uh, I mean, you take a look what? at it. This is definitely not a fancy laser weapon or anything like okay. that. It's just a big old slug pistol. Uh, Mala. A did Mala. Anyone else, did anyone else get it? Oh, like to the side, I was like, did anyone else bring a gun? Uh, <laughs> we didn't bring a gun. Oh, I have a God. sandworm. I could throw my sandworm, but I don't want them to get shot. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's bring a gun next time. Let's bring like yeah. one. Okay. Like just I'm not saying I you know, just uh, just one among us. Sorry. I like the <laughs> image of us all clacking to each other like as if they like pulling their weapon. You're right. the assassin. Yeah. I do tricky I'm like I'm like I do BBC Sherlock style murders. Overcomplicated, <laughs> stylistic, <laughs> sort of soulless, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's my mm -hmm. style. That's my style. <laughs> I've got something. <laughs> well, um, I'll be passing it back to your team. You can decide who goes next in a moment. Um, but actually, um, Obergon is going to turn right back, seeing this betrayal of her old friend uh, attacking with this wrench, and is going to fire right at you point blank. Um, so this is going to be a battle check to uh, to dodge out of the way, I assume. Battle is pretty much what we're going to use for this entire conflict. Unless okay. you've got something fancy you want to do. Nope. Uh, um, no, well, not yet, if you've but got, soon. Like, I guess if you have dodge as a move focus, we could do a move for it instead. Yeah. Nope. Um, okay. All right. Well, then uh, we'll just roll that uh, just this way. And I got two successes. Two successes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oops, uh, again, um, spend one threat to get an additional die on this. Um, um, and on these, since I roll, oh, wait, I didn't roll ones on those. Never mind. But had I rolled ones on those, we would have gotten momentum even on this roll. That is a good question. Um, I think not. I think okay. that does not work in a contest, but I would need to check that more specifically. What about okay. my Star Trek experts? Does that make sense? You, you uh, would still get... Role? Yeah, in Star Trek, you would still get the momentum, I believe. Even on the... Okay, on the defensive role? Cool. All cool. right. Uh, well, then. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I yeah, think so, but I believe it could so. also be different. If you generate you. extra momentum? Yeah, yeah anytime yeah. you would get that. Regardless. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, the, uh, the pistol fires... Um, no, it is not with a focus. Um, and it is two successes as well. So I'll just get rid of that threat since I spent it. Um, no one yeah. generates any extra momentum and you get hit um, just point blank right in the side, uh, tearing through your still suit. Um, not in the thighs, you're okay, but still like <laughs> water goes flying. That's the grossest thing. I love knowing that. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, step back, taking three uh, points of battle damage, I suppose. Uh, what right. is your battle score, Justin? My battle score is four. It's four, <laughs> okay. So, hovering, hovering. All right, uh, initiative goes back to you. So who wants to go next? It's up to you. Um, I'll, I'd like to go next, um, if I may. Yeah. I'd like to yeah, do a cool martial arts thing and kick the pistol out of at Obergon's hand. Ooh, Ooh, I like that. So going in to remove an asset from the scene, I like that a lot. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. um, I am in. Um, well, uh, what, what do you want to do for this role? What's, uh, what sounds good to you? What are you up to? Uh, well, well uh, first skill, obviously, battle. I have a martial arts focus. Uh -huh. um, and I would use probably either duty or power. Duty is I must always move in the best interest of my house. One gathers power by putting together the strongest allies. I like it. I like it. Nice. All so right. Should I do duty or power? I'm going to roll real quick. I got zero successes. In fact, I got duty. a complication on my end. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> so, and I get uh, so a duty is perfectly fine. On one yeah, of my you do. because of my yeah. Bindu conditioning. I rolled a move to dodge and a little bit of power there. Doesn't seem to be going great for, uh, for our friend Obergon. <laughs> oh, darn. Oh. How come it didn't? Sorry. Oh, did you not do I, it in the character I, sheet? Yeah, sorry. I'm gonna do that properly now. All um, right, fair enough. Take it away. Okay. Uh, it's been a week and I already forgot. <laughs> I <gotta roll> <laughs> All right. So, I'll use 
Yeah, I'll use drive because I'm in the movie in the best interest of my house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, battle and I'm sorry, duty. What did I say? Duty. Yeah. Duty. Yeah. And You're then torn between duty or power, and I thought duty was kind of a cool flair. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. And uh, okay. one, I got so I got one success, but I get a reroll because of my prana bindu. Fair enough. So I'm actually nice. going to go ahead and reroll one die. Sounds good. So same thing. Battle, duty, one die, focus, yes. And that was a success. Hey. Two successes. All right. So with that, you easily get up and uh, and take control of that asset. Uh, you could knock it uh, anywhere you want it, actually. Um, towards one of your companions, just off to the out of the ship. What sounds good? Is anyone good with pistols or firearms in particular? Uh, no. no. Then I'll <laughs> just... <laughs> if I could just kick it and then pick it up myself, sure, just to yeah. get it away from the bad people. Absolutely, you just kick it flying up into the air and catch it. And then, easy. You make yeah. it look easy with those two successes. Nice. Um, and honestly, since I rolled so badly, that is two momentum for your team. Okay. Yes. Great. All right. Let's keep it on our end. There you go. Yes, you could hold on to the initiative if you want. Yeah, let's do that. So we spend the two momentum um, and someone else goes. Yeah. It's it's two momentum for someone else to go. I believe it's two. I'm gonna double check again, but I believe that is correct. Perfect. I you. Yeah, that I mean, sounds about right. Who wants to go next? <laughs> yeah. I think Doctor Ewan, sure. you were thinking about. Yeah. I'd, I'd be glad to uh, administer a cure all to this problem. Um, I uh, I have my you know my still suit, but I, I think I would still wear some sort of like outfit on the outside, doctor's oh, yeah. outfit of some sort. Uh -huh. And uh, in the sleeve, I kind of pull up and reveal the flip dart uh, that I wear under it. Uh, it looks like it just holds you know needles that I might need to administer, uh, which <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is actually what I'm doing. Uh, and I'm going to fire a, a it says poison or drug that would be on this thing. Uh, at uh, our troublemaker, Jaris Obregon. Okay. Um, and so I guess what, what kind of, you know, I, I don't think I'd be going for damage. I, ideally, I'd like like a truth serum type thing, but, you know, if not, to make them sluggish, what, what's my Wait, latitude? I have something so, for you, if, if we can collaborate on this. I don't uh -huh. know how, but I have, wait, where is it? I have Distrans, which is, um, nope, sorry, that's wrong. I have Verite. It, uh, it's a... It's a drug that smashes through a user's willpower, compelling them to tell the truth. Nice. Wow. wow. Can I give it to him to use? I mean, I, I will totally say that you were, um, when when they, we were doing some questions as uh, as Obergon was landing, I think that you were being pretty cagey about those questions. If you wanted to plot something in advance, that sounds good to me. All right. Okay. Flashback. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then I will fire this at... Uh... A lot of people think there isn't truth serum, but there is. And I'm going <laughs> to fire it at Obergon. This, this um, is a sign. This is great. <laughs> so I'm going to say that that's uh, battle with truth. OK, I like that. And again, hold on just a moment, because this is uh, this is against uh, Obergon, of course. Uh, mm, they're right. again going to try and dodge this sort of thing. I mean, as it is coming in, um, they're going to continue to use their justice in order to do it. And oh, yeah, I'm going to spend one more threat to get an additional die on this one. So three nice. dice. I mean, not really, but you know. I mean, huh. I understand. <laughs> uh, how do we do? Ha! How do we do? Wow, you mm. failed. Mm. Oh, but... <laughs> one more threat gone. Only two left. <laughs> All right. So I have two one dice. Success is all you need. And I have two dice. And then uh, my focus lies. She Ooh. keeps spinning oh, around by facing all of you all the time. You got a success, so it is successful, right? Zero yes. is there's no complications there. So um, this is uh, one of your personal assets. So again, it's doing three. Um, you're targeting Obergon, and defeat doesn't mean you know death or anything else. It just means whatever you think it would be to knock them out of the scene. What I so. what I would like to do is, yeah. since this is a truth serum, is and we've got all these other people that are kind of in league with her. Uh, I would like to say, tell us the truth. Is it not that all of these people are uh, 
expendable to you. You care nothing for them. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Obergon is kind of just a little bit woozy looking over at you and goes, I, there's, there's, of course, there's more, there's more crews I could hire to, to harvest spice. Anyone can do it. I just need people of low moral standing and, uh, and a, a need for, for money. Why didn't you try to hire us? <laughs> I mean, we were right here. Mm -hmm. We were literally right here. Did we come across as like... This is what this is really about. We, did you think we had too much integrity? You need a mint hat. If you, think, <laughs> if you thought that, you complete misread. Not now, she, Rohai, not She now. reaches up and she grabs this patch, which has the House of Posh insignia on it. She tears it off, throws it at Drohai. <gasps> Catch it. You sent me here to this terrible planet and only this the house nice. the, the yelpers gave me oh, it's good oh gosh <laughs> and it just starts kind of mumbling and and pausing and looking down almost ready to go to sleep on the floor it's a chaotic scene so we may not get a whole lot more out of obergon at the moment <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but you see hand drawn underneath that patch the uh, again the icon the yelp icon right there they didn't even give you a patch I, 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 you had to draw that? You had to draw that? How Postage, this was better? <laughs> oh, Brigand, listen. Yelp what? is... <laughs> it is a slippery slope, okay? You post <laughs> one review and you feel so powerful, <laughs> all right? But you're not. You're just shouting into a void about things that no one actually cares about. <laughs> so hold on, it's hold the on. gateway drug to next door. Exactly. How could you fall for this? Over uh, they uh, made a lot of promises and, and a lot yeah, of. Yeah, I'm sure of, they did. A lot mm. of money. A lot of. Mm. Oh, they don't like the sauce. Yeah, they, they should did, like the sauce. They, they, <laughs> our sauce is good sauce. Did, did they uh -huh. really pay you, my friend? Because well, oh, yeah. they sh they did. All right. Well. Yeah. Do no, you have the money with you? Shame you won't get to spend it. No, it's it's back on the the, the ship. I've got it well hidden. Uh, they needed a whole lot of uh, of spice recently, so we've Where been... is it hidden? Since yeah, yeah they're a whole under lot the under the influence. Yeah. What, uh, what? Where is it uh, hidden? Since you're under the influence. Oh, it's a head back to you. Just go to my cabin. Look, I put it in a really smart place. And you, the whole crew around here is like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's like up in the ceiling. I look at it every time I go to sleep. That's where all okay. my money is. That's nice. my let's, future. Let's keep that. Let's keep that in mind, everyone. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm also um, now establishing a pattern around what Rich thinks people do with secret things. <laughs> like, now we know how to find anything Rich has hidden. Like, this is literally this is like this is like the opening scene of Inception. This you know? is information. Like, hey, Rich, where would you hide something? You this is information I could have used a week ago, guys. <laughs> I was just at Rich's place. <laughs> oh, right there, it's right there. Um, <laughs> Uh, I watch National Treasure so much, and it's just like everything's in the most obvious place, right? So mm -hmm. that's how I do it. <laughs> On the back of the Declaration of Independence, literally right. everything exactly. is. Yeah. Don't tell any of my students. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so you've got this crowd around you, and I'm taking a look at the time. I see what it is. Um, Obergon at this point kind of like curls up on the ground, but uh, but the crew is still angry and upset because. Uh, they're also making some money right now. And uh, and as the initiative bounces back, I'm going to take one uh, one swing with our friend Metzos over here, um, uh, who is going to rush in uh, also with a pistol and is going to take a shot oh, no. at. Well, I mean, kind of looking around, you seem to have this handled pretty well. But our first attack is going to go against who's already hit. <laughs> um, uh, Brad Montana, go ahead and give me. Bring it. A, uh, one last check. This is to dodge out of the way of another pistol. They both train themselves on you. The best pilot in the world, you know, who's trying to get all your friends off to safety. Oh, excellent. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. <laughs> Brad Montana oh. dodges. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> <laughs> shot rings out in this place the the whole crew is holding their ears um yelling uh you see them grabbing at whatever they can find like long pieces of of uh of steel um huge crates to start throwing at you a few of them do have knives i mean it's not it's not a totally ridiculous here but uh they don't seem to have pistols on them uh the initiative goes back to you get to the chopper <laughs> <laughs> who is get to the top wants to top. take a turn yeah <laughs> 
Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, Parmoon and Drohai. Yeah. yeah. Someone should get some spice too. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm all about. That's legit. Yeah, I've made, yeah, I, I missed out on the last spice spice heist. So, um, I'm actually gonna take I'm gonna take one of those barrels and use my special rope and tie the barrel ah! to my back if it seems. <laughs> Lift so it's like, just, like, just like an immediate lasso and boom, it's on. Yeah, just just <laughs> it gets it cinches much like the still suit. The motion of my body as I'm walking is cinching the barrel closer to my back. I'm really nice. glad that I'm not walking very far. Do we say we're going to an ornithopter? Are we leaving? <laughs> I sounded like it. I think it's time for a tactical retreat. All right, okay. all right. I'll grab the um, other barrel and without a rope, much less gracefully roll it around. <laughs> All right, so you scramble and grab these barrels. They're, they're not enormous, so you're able to pick them up reasonably okay. easily. You're okay. I mean, they're, they're still... You're not doing much else while you're carrying these. Yeah. Um, but uh, I will say that as, uh, as you grab those things, and we'll say the initiative come back comes back to me, um, one of my enemies is going to get a turn, and uh, you feel uh, a buckling. The entire ship moves. Um... Uh, something has just pushed upwards and, and sent it just into the air, just a few feet, just enough for you to oh, bounce. No. Um, uh, there's a loud sound from outside uh, that you can hear, and at this point, um, nope, that's what you can. That's what you got so far. Um, you I start to feeling. smell start a little bit, um, and uh, and Parmoon immediately understands what's going on. You start oh, to yeah. smell what? You start Cinnamon? smelling. Um, Let's see. Yeah, something like cinnamon, but also something that's it's got like kind of a, a little more carnal scent to it. Yeah. Um, a little like flint and fire there. Mm. That's not that's not just spice. No, no. Um we gotta get going. Come you, on. Uh, pop this hatch. Uh the the crew is running around grabbing their weapons, getting ready for a battle, uh, leaving you with an opportunity to leap out of the ship if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay. All right. Um the, you see that underneath you, the ground is like for uh, uh, easily 50 feet all around this ship. Like it's massive. The sand has just been pushed upwards. Um, you just see it like in these new dunes all over the place. Uh, the thopter is off in the distance and a lot of those marks are right next to the thopter. It's also been pushed up uh, as well. Um, and as you start running for it and you see uh, Metsos like stick an arm out of this um, this harvester down here and just kind of fire wildly as you were all running for it. Um, you hear a loud noise coming from the sand right next to the thopter. And as you get a close, familiar, you realize that there is, what's that? A familiar sound? Uh, I mean, actually to you, I kind of, yeah. 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 Um, you get close and it seems like, uh, like over here is is maybe not exactly Fremen, but there's a replicated thumper just here on the ground, like a box nice. just vibrating constantly along the ground, mm. um, calling the sandworm. Um, and uh, and again, you start smelling that smell extremely strongly as you get to the thopter. Um, let's see. I know Agent Brad Montana is hurt, um, but uh, not out of it yet. So you're taking the pilot's chair? You doing yes, it? I am. All right. The team leaps inside, and, uh, oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. Oh, sure. We got it. Uh, right. Uh, it doesn't take you much. This thing is still hot. It's ready to go. The engine is good. Doesn't seem sabotaged, hopefully. Um, you fire it up. The wings start start flapping. You launch off of the, the surface. Um, did you turn off the thumper before you left? What? what? No. Nah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, nah. Then, nah. Uh, as you get a little bit of height, the uh, the harvester is still moving forward at a pretty slow pace. Uh, but again, it buckles as as the sand rises underneath it. Um, you're able to easily get uh, a few hundred feet in the air and a ways away from this, as you just see this massive, massive uh, eruption from the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and send over. Let's see. Yes, indeed. Some artwork. Oh yeah. Uh, did that come across? Yes. Sure did. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Oh nice. Um, nice. Right. So you're you're just kind of looking down and you can see the sandworm like 
come upwards underneath, like immediately eating this this thumper. I mean, that was no problem. Uh, but mm-hmm. that harvester was he, was pretty dang big, floating around um, with a uh, two dozen people aboard. You see, a couple of them have run away and are kind of scrambling as the the sand like falls out from under them, and they slide inside this massive tooth worm. Um, it just rises up, consumes it all, and then <laughs> sinks back down beneath the sands. Yeah. Um, and just like that, story of Corinth Euler is over. Um, no, <laughs> everybody is it. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. The uh, they are uh, gone for good. Um, did you take anyone with you? Actually, I should ask that. That's an important question. You were getting out. Um, you had a, a true did... serum from uh, Obergon, but was there anyone hiding in my barrel of spice? No, no, no. Then no. no. <laughs> I, I, you know, I would have, tr- I would have tried to to wave um, Euler to join us, but yeah, you know, if I mean, he didn't make, like it, he didn't make it. But you know, that, heavy fire and yeah, that that, that I, I would have yelled, <laughs> yeah. "Hey, Euler, or whatever," just waved him. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, not going out of my way. I'm not. I didn't nice. mean to add a sad moment. No, you fly away. You soar away victorious, right? Yeah. Uh, not only are you not. <laughs> uh, been eaten by a sandworm i mean that's a big deal um mm-hmm. you uh you're certainly able to expose a bit of mismanagement i guess a lot um uh some smugglers uh especially supplying your your mortal enemies over there in uh those yelpers <laughs> and uh yeah. and make it back to the grief i mean i i don't know you you had this intention of taking over the grief it seemed like and now with uh most of their leadership out of the picture um well, I, I I reckon we got ourselves a grief, right? Oh we yeah, did I did it. I mention? Oh. I have a I have a spice harvester, so like I'm not too worried about the one that just got eaten by the sandworms. I got another one. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, you I have a gonna... spice harvester? Yeah, yeah, like an entire spice harvester. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh well. have I never mentioned it? No. It, it, you know, I don't think it. Ca- I don't think it came up somehow. Huh. I, I, I thought we were cooler than that. What's up? I mean, uh... <laughs> right. but yeah, soon enough it seems you are able to take control of a, another spice harvester. At the very least, uh, you've uh, proven to the empire that uh, you are much better at managing this than uh, the people that they actually have, which seems like a big point in your favor. So, uh, so the reports should uh, should probably go pretty well once you get back and and meet with the imperial envoy there. Kind of mention how it went. You should be able to head back to Spice World and tell the the leadership of your house how uh, how best to go about this and how to do it efficiently, ruthlessly, if you will, and uh, and drain as much spice as possible for your own house's power. Um, very very well done uh, um yeah. yes. i have a question once we're yeah. back on spice world uh is guy fieri spice okay <laughs> actually when uh when you get into orbit um right you you uh <laughs> i keep wanting to say hyperspace when you arrive in orbit <laughs> we'll just leave it at that just doodly do you get there um yeah. There are there are immediate calls going out. Like you pick them up as soon as you get into the system. Um, uh, warning signals coming from Spice World below, um, and uh, the closer you get, the sooner you realize that there was some sort of an incursion while you were gone. And uh, I was trying really hard to come up with a better word for uh, the. Uh, uh, no, there we go. Yeah, um, your leader, the head chef, has fallen into the Fieri sleep. Um, oh. and <laughs> No, no, no. If only there was the Odin sleep. I love it. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, no. Uh, the the Yelpers were able to come in here infused with all the spice that they had gained from the surface and uh, and do an attack on house leadership. Oh. And, uh, and Guy Fieri with spice was quite injured in the battle and uh, is currently resting and recuperating and likely will not be able to take control of, of house duties for some time. Uh, things are moving to more of a warlike effort, you can tell. And uh, and your group will have more tasks to come, probably in a more direct form against the uh, the Yelpers, uh... rather, than, uh, rather than simply sitting in the back. Although you're able to deal with those things, you know, as you see fit. <laughs> the council knows that uh, frontal assaults may not be uh, your particular cup of tea, so they'll let you take the reins however you want to <laughs> yeah. okay. on these further missions. Uh, but after proving yourself and getting back, uh, you are definitely welcomed back. Sp- uh, backstage to uh, to eat another marvelous meal and meet with the leadership and uh, and begin your uh, 
revenge against the Yelpers. Um, we'll leave spice for the future and uh, immediately get into some house conflict. Um, but yes, you get back successfully and uh, and everything is great. Perfect. Nicely done. Um, this is really, I, uh, I love the Dune system because combat conflict is quick. It's not something that's going to yeah. drag us out too long. We're able to move pretty quickly with our attacks, our assets. People fall pretty readily. Mm -hmm. um, leaving people who, if they want to be like, I don't want to fight, uh, free to be part of the entire game. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Oh my goodness. Well, as the, the House of Posh wraps up, I, I'm so thankful that all of you have been around for this, um, for this ridiculous uh, investigation with this, uh, everybody was bad, it seems like. I mean, except for you. And you are, um, in a sense, heroes by a, a process of elimination? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> huh. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, but successful nonetheless. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any final thoughts on, uh, on the Dune RPG experience? What do you think? I really enjoy Dune, the Dune system. It's uh, the 2D20 system. It's been a ton of fun to play. Uh, I look forward to playing it some more. Um, I'm very, I'm going to look into book now that we're all done and, and, and dig into like leveling and how that works because that's not something ah. we got to experience here. But I think it's something important that's kind of going to well, be kind of fun. I'll tell you, gaining advance point, advancement points comes from adversity. So whenever you are defeated during conflict, you get an advancement point. When you fail at a difficulty three task uh, or when uh, the peril is strong enough that I spend four or more points of threat at once. Ah. So... Uh, this is a game where you advance through failure. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we had a little bit, I would say, um, B may have picked up a point in there with a, I think it was B with that stealth check um, on the first day. Oh, the first failure? Sabotaging, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that big one, the dramatic one at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in other words, if I had spent a whole bunch here with, uh, with Obregon at the end, uh, that would have been another one potentially, which I probably would have done to help you advance. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Yes, that's, that's nice. I like the idea that when the DM is being hard on you, that's to your benefit. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, that's cool. I like yeah. that a right. lot. And it fits yeah. well with the Dune world that, uh, that you will not succeed all the time. Right? There's a lot of nice <laughs> angles to how the system works to try to tell stories. And, and it's sort of subtle, which is always nice when the design is kind of just doing that uh, in, in a nice way like that. Um, and I like the Roll20 integration. It's pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, that so was nice. really helpful. Wow. Yeah, the Roll20 uh, <laughs> integration, is it was amazing. Mm -hmm. It made it seamless. Totally Otherwise, agree. I would have struggled. Yeah, right. <laughs> it would have been a lot of thinking, wait, which roll? But it really like shows you the entire process. It's really nice. And, and it breaks it down nicely, lightweight. which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, incredible. Thank you all so much for, for being part of this. And for everybody who is watching, I hope you've got a handle on the uh, the. 2d20 system here with dune all the different 2d20 games are are slightly different but uh, i'm a big fan of this one and how it's all set up and i love the way Steos mentioned that it tells stories um all right we are going this is going to be our final moment so we are going to have our raffle just as soon as we get our our outros all done find out where we can find our cast so if you have not yet hit uh, exclamation mark raffle and a number from one to ten to join in and win a free copy of the pdf and while you're doing that let's find out where we can find our cast uh this week and in the future, um, I'm going to start with Teos. Oh, my goodness. Uh -huh. uh, you can find me on the Mastering Dungeons podcast uh, this Thursday. Our episode has a really fun guest. James Hake is our guest. who's oh, going to talk nice. about the critical role book that is coming out soon. Um, it's a really nice conversation. You're going to enjoy that. Uh, on my blog, alphastream.org. Uh, you can find the latest that I'm up to. And if you haven't done it yet, claim your free product for signing up. And you can always find me on Twitter at AlphaStream. Excellent. Thank you very much. Justin, where can we find you on the internet? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you can find me, of course. Uh, we'll be back this Sunday on Owlbear Soup. Uh, additionally, you can find me DJing over on twitch.tv slash DJ Pirate Rabbits. Um, I should be back uh, behind the decks tomorrow, but if not, for sure, on Friday, I'm going to be part of a raid train. Uh, we're raising money for a, uh, a DJ who, unfortunately, even after getting the vaccine, caught the Delta variant and is in the hospital, so is unable to work. So we're raising money for him, um, and I'll be doing that on Friday evening. Um, and I'll probably still continue doing it personally on my Saturday morning stream as well. Um, Delta variant's no joke, friends, even if you got the vaccine, mask up. Be cool. Uh, you can also follow me on all the all the socials at DJ Pirate Rabbits. Excellent. 
Excellent, excellent. All right, Cohen, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me at Skull Mandible on Twitter, and if you like streaming, you can find me at twitch.tv slash gameworms. Uh, we are two weeks into, we're reading a, 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 every morning, every morning of the work week, Monday to Friday, uh, playing games with the Game Worms. That's 8 a.m. Eastern to 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, playing Subnautica right now, and we're also doing a Dune book club where we're reading it a chunk at a time on Tuesday mornings. Ah, it's a lot of fun. Excellent. Yeah. And then this Friday, <laughs> uh, me and my buddy Casey Green are playing, uh, Friday afternoon, are playing... Um, is it like Dark Souls, but like it's randomized? I don't, I don't, I don't know quite know oh, the details yet, but I'm excited. Yep. <laughs> so that's Very this nice. week. Um, it's been a pleasure. Very cool. Thank you so much. Um, B, where can we find you on the internet? Yeah. Hey, what's up? I've been your non-binary busy B. You can find me on Twitter is at B underscore Zelda. I'm a podcaster, a member of the Broadswords, a host of Anime Attaché, and a player in Power Play RPG. I run in a handful of streams. You'll have to follow me online to figure out my schedule. And I am the community manager for D&D Adventures League. We are releasing some adventures for uh, mm, Dreams of the Red Wizard. So things are getting serious. Wow. 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 Okay, that's exciting. <laughs> um, all right. And Elisa, where can we find you on the internet? Well, uh, I'm Elisa Pearl. You can find me at Elisa Pearl on Twitter and Instagram. And I do two D&D streams on the weekend. Saturdays, I run Lords of Faerun, D&D 5e. And then on Sunday, I play in the Gax Pack, which is also D&D 5e. Um, and I also run a monthly Klingon Star Trek Adventures campaign uh, the last Mondays of the month. Um, but I tweet about all of these things and put them on my Instagram. So definitely follow me so that you can see my schedule. And uh, in September, I have some a couple of new things coming up. So check me out to find them and watch those. I'm going to have to stay tuned. Excellent. Um, my name is Rich. These are my headphones. Um, and I am the, the luckiest person in the world to have been able to play with this fantastic cast throughout the week um, or throughout the, the month. Oh, my gosh. Um, I have recently opened up the Academy of Adventures for after school. Um, so if you've got kids out there 11 to 15 who are looking to play D&D throughout the school year, let me know. Um, the uh, admissions are open right now at academyofadventures.com. And you can find most of my stuff at, uh, at Armelina on the places or at uh, Academy of Adventures at other places. There we go. <laughs> I like to be precise. Um, and with that, Dom, are you ready? It is time for the giveaway. I got to check the chat. <laughs> and while we're checking that, thank you, Rich. Amazing run. Yes, oh my gosh. this is so fun. Thank oh, yeah, this was so good. I, <laughs> I, I love this format for the learn to play, too, where, yeah. where you know, we, we, we all started at the beginning and have just gone all the way through an adventure. And uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, Rich, what's the next one we're going to do? <laughs> what's done next? Thanks. I mean, the, wow. Um, hmm. I have some thoughts. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to get back to you. I, I was very happy to see the uh, the Avatar RPG hit Kickstarter today. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> oh, hello. I yeah. might be running a stream for that at some point because I've already playtested it and I ran oh, the yeah? games Ooh. for Magpie. And it's really friggin' cool. Like, if we could just talk Amazing. about playing names, like just the way the system is laid out, the way your bending <laughs> works, the way your weapons work, combat is really fun, like your skill set. And you have like this, 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 like, <laughs> yin and yang almost pin where you have to balance like what makes you like a good kid versus what makes you like good in other way it's it's so good um so our winners <laughs> <laughs> i'm checking the chat do we have our, our giveaway winners yet yes we do uh oh, mr rob good. dc uh let's see here is one of our winners and i think i lost the other ones we've got is that right how how we g yeah Yep. And Adventures Tony. Oh, Adventures of Tony. Way oh, to go, congratulations. Y'all. All right. Thank you so much. Wow. Uh, thanks for checking the chat for me there, everybody. Um, I, I do. I love the RPG Exploration Society. This has been a ton of fun. I can't wait to uh, to learn some more games and some more systems. Uh, and I hope all those winners get out there and try the Dune RPG because I think it's a ton of fun. Um, play more games. Um, I suppose we'll see you in the future, everybody. Have a great night. Uh, so we'll see you next time. <laughs>